ingredients. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... Hi, I'm Agent Simon Irv Pro with CRSF. What is CRSF? We're the Cleanup and Restoration Special Forces. Hoorah! We're Surf Pro's first responders to your property's disaster. Admit it, you're no good at handling disaster alone. Like when you got dumped in high school by Janet Fillmore. She married three-time world champion yodeler Jovan Bovich. With the Janet disaster, you didn't have a team. Now, you have a team. Elite Surf Pro operatives highly trained in disaster cleanup and restoration. If it's fire damage, Agent Fred Iyer. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. But oh wait, it's water. Boom, Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. But Simon, what about mold? Agent Marlon Ohl. He holds the world record for fastest mold remediation. And finally, Agent Smith. He's in charge of restoring your property to its original state. So if you sprung a leak, lit your curtains on fire, or your insulation looks like weak old bagels, call SurfPro. In southwestern and south central North Dakota, on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Ackerman Svold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Svold. Find them online at ackermansvold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Svold. Find them at ackermansvold.com.
Good evening and welcome to Cargo Gymnasium, where we have a doubleheader, and, but not your doubleheader, the normal kind that you see in the basketball side. We're going to go doubleheader in wrestling. I don't know if they call that a doubleheader. They do a, a double duel, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm Chuck Claremont and my partner, John Gums, and we're at the Bismarck High Campus, where they just, the JV, uh, what do they call these, John? They call them the yeah, exhibition, exhibition matches. matches just finished, so people got a little extra uh, bonus for their, their money, and and we're going to get just about getting ready for the, as the girls are going to step out here and they'll have about 15 minutes to do their warm-up. We're in the Shields pregame show. And it looks, it looks like they will have one exhibition match in the background. Oh, perfect. So that's awesome. So you get a chance we to see talk. a girls' exhibition match. As we're in the Shields pregame, as Shields offers clothing, footwear, and gear for all your passions from fishing to fashion, Shields is dedicated to offering you the best retail experience. Shop sporting goods, hunting and fishing gear, clothing, and more at Shields of Minot and Bismarck. So, John, we take a look at these the girls' side. and. Let's step right into these two teams as Bismarck High comes in three and two and Century two and three. But it was so many things, not that the regular season doesn't matter, but when it comes to wrestling, there's so many variables that goes into uh, wrestling that uh, until you get to tr the true end of the year, until you get to the West Region and State Tournament, there's so many things that can change. Yeah, as these teams step in here, the girls have got a lot of experience this year. It just comes down to, you know, we have the region tournament next Friday for the girls. They, de they determine their position if they get a wrestle in the duels. They take four of each side. The, the girls only qualify eight teams for the duels. And right now, Bismarck High is sitting in that one spot. I'm, you know, they're really improved. In fact, their record since the Rotary, they've won all their tournaments. Yeah, we'll take a look at the girls' uh, record in here as you see the uh, girls wrestling. The West Region and overall record is Minot sitting at number one at 5-0. and oh, Legacy as number two, 5-1 and one in the West Region. And then Bismarck and then Century follows up with them. And uh, the one thing is we, that, those are the, the standings for the girls, but as we take a look at really the overall poll, because that's kind of one of the things I, I love uh, digging into that. And it's, it's a little bit small, but, you know, understand this, that there's a lot of girls tonight. You see the maroon side. That's a lot of the Bismarck High kids. So there's, uh, what, we got set eight ranked wrestlers from Bismarck High on here. And ultimately for a century, we have three ranked wrestlers, including, including the number one ranked Ray Ogden uh, for the Patriots. But when we take a look at the one thing that they don't have for the, these polls is they don't have the team rankings. This is the individual rankings, but for teams, they do it for the boys, and we'll touch on that when we get into the boys' side. But from the girls' perspective, they don't. But that's why we got a guy like you, John Gums, <laughs> and Dakota Grappler. As you dig into these, you know these, you have scientific evidence that proves who is ranked number one in the state of North Dakota right now. Well, I tell you what, I wish it was that easy. But, <laughs> but when it comes down to it, I tell you what, Bismarck High has really got on a roll, and I just did a pre-state ranking for them and it's going to come out probably on Sunday after all the stuff for the girls, boys, both Class A and Class B and the Bismarck girls had pulled ahead by two points really close compared to Legacy and Minot right with them in the three and then you have Central Cass on the far side of this of the state to the previous state champions rounding out the top four. Yeah, and so you take a look at that, and, um, you know, Bismarck High got a couple losses, but it, I loved some of the comments reading a great article that was written in the, in the Tribune this week. They talked about it, this Bismarck High girls team where they came in the last four tournaments. They got a top finish at the Bell of the Ball at, in, in Central Cast last weekend, but they have been doing a lot of winning. Bismarck High has been really getting into their, their own, let's, you know, so to speak. And listening to Scott Nolan, I think, they're kind of the epitome of girls wrestling right now in North Dakota where he is building a program. A full team. A Co full team. That's such a key for wrestling. Correct. And in a big tournament, when you start putting all the Class A and Class B girls together, you start looking at girls that can place, you know, those third, fourth, fifth, sixth, to get them on the podium. And Bismarck has those girls in the middle. And so you just pile those points up. Yeah, and you talk about that. That's a great segue as I look at these, the tournaments that they played, and they only had one champion. They had Cambry Anderson. She was a champion. She's just an eighth grader, and they're such a young team. Uh, all these girls are from both Century and Bismarck are very young. But they had five people in the in this championship, just one winner. But it just talks about to the depth of that Bismarck High team, and, and we're going to see that tonight. So, t so true. Um, you know when they start working off one another, start working with partners, you start seeing pairs of girls getting better and moving up the ranks. You know, you, the people around, the, the studs in the team, they bring them with. And girls are so good partners with one another, rooting each other, they help each other out. 
They, you know, and Scott Nolan is just the proof, you know, that that they can be done at this level. That's yeah, a perfect reason why Scott Nolan came back after retiring after an amazing career with the on the boys' side. This is his second year, but he coached Bismarck High boys. As well, uh, most people listening know, 26 year at 15 state titles, 12 dual championships, and I mean, he was just not only a great wrestler that he finished undefeated, two state championship. He just he's a great coach, and for Bismarck High to have him. Uh, come into the program. It's just great. So we're going to take a first break, our first pregame um, uh, break, as as we're just finishing up some of the exhibition exhibition matches. There's one uh, girls exhibition match where we follow. There's some five different boys exhibition matches, which is why the, the fans are really starting to kind of get in here. So I would suspect by the time we've got the girls and boys duel, we're going to have a nice crowd. So we'll take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk about each one of these, these teams uh, more as you're listening to High School Wrestling on the PSP Network. Finding the right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. It's water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, poise, yeah! It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here? Ah. That's a spot! Right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros and Back at the Shields pregame show, Chuck Claremont and John Gums. Uh, John Gums, uh, we could talk hours about you, Johnny, and, and I will definitely give you some props as we go forward. I just, I appreciate you joining us. As, so this is the fourth time, actually, you and I have done a match together. And for somebody stepping into this who I've been a lifelong wrestling fan, but not in the detail you have, I mean, you've been wrestling, you, you wrestled for how many years? I mean, well, since birth. <laughs> <laughs> Fight my way. But no, I, I had experience at all levels, but I'm just a fan to the heart you know my, my dad was involved in the sport of wrestling and just basically you know grew up on that side as he, he coached the Napoleon team for several state championships and no it's just in my blood so I wanted to promote the sport and I started it in 1999 and just keep going so I know the wrestling community appreciates what you do and with the Dakota Grappler and all the information you put out and the podcasts and everything and it's just you're you're similar to the North Dakota or to uh, PSP and that you do most things for free yeah and that's just a, a great testimony to what you feel uh, about the wrestling community in, in Bismarck and in North Dakota and South Dakota as well and so fans if you just joined us we're just about ready to the girls are going to come out and did they say national anthem already? Oh, yep, national anthem. They're getting a good going. I don't. Did he say that? Nope. No, they didn't. The girls were already standing, yeah. thinking they're doing they were, national anthem. Yeah. But the Bismarck Demons got to run out and do do their piece. Yep. So one thing I want to let's talk about this is, as the Demons, you see them running out their tradition. The home, the home team gets to come out. The mad, they get their little you know music. They rile up the crowd a little bit. Yeah, and there's definitely some good crowd behind us. And, and they'll do chain breakers in the middle. It's the Bismarck High thing. You'll see them do what's called chain breakers. Oh, no, the girls don't do it. You'll see the guys. 
in the middle. It's okay. a little different. They didn't follow the tradition. <laughs> they didn't follow the tradition. So, But putting the hoods up, that is a demon tradition, though. The, the putting the hoods up is a big thing for the demons. So we are going to do the national anthem, so we'll take another a national anthem break. We'll take about a two-minute national anthem break. When we come back, we'll get going. You're listening to PSP Wrestling. Are you moving? your business, or your home, across the town or across the country. We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact, and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot, and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers Moving and Storage. Right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. Simon, what about mold? Agent Marlon Old. He holds the world record for fastest mold remediation. Let's finish the national anthem there. It's a good rendition there in the national anthem as a couple guys sang that. That was nice, and yes. so Chuck Claremont and John Gums alongside me tonight, and crowds kind of filing in as we have two duels tonight. We have the Century and Bismarck High girls first, where Bismarck High is number one, according to John Gums and the Dakota Grappler. Century comes in at number seven, and then tonight is a big one uh, for the boys, or later after this is boys, Bismarck High number one, and Century sitting at number two, so pretty exciting. There'll be a lot of great matches, a lot of things back and forth, and right now, they're announcing girls. And what does this really mean? This doesn't mean these girls are necessarily wrestling each other. Well, not necessarily. No, as you start bumping things up, as they do the face-offs here, coaches have strategy at times, and they, they'll they come out. It's more in the boys than the girls. The girls will set things up, so they pretty much know who they're going to face. But if this was the state tournament, these two shaking hands would not matter a lot of times. You could bump one, people up, one person up, and it matters on numbers. The girls can't make a lot of adjustments usually because they don't have the backups behind them. Uh, Bismarck High does. <laughs> yeah, and we'll talk about Bismarck High. But first, look, we had a, we had a little bit of a pre-conversation on Bismarck High. Let's talk about Century as we're in the Shields pregame show. And the, uh, Century, the one thing they don't have is they, they don't quite have a full lineup. That's and so true. they're still building their program from that aspect to get some full lineup. But they have some very quality wrestlers in this program, highlighted by one Ray Ogden. That's true. I tell you, Ray Ogden, you know, she's 32 or 33 and 2 on the season, wrestling really well. But, you know, they've got a, they do have a team. They're very young. You know, right now it's time to recruit. You know, day one until, until next year, they've got to fill the room with about another six to ten bodies. And then they'll start filling the lineup. They did have a couple unfortunate injuries to open up some of those weight classes and that's another thing you know they they're working so hard sometimes they they don't realize that they overdo themselves too the first time wrestling yeah, and so you take a look at ray ogden she's ranked number one in the uh, the poll as we talked about that and the girls uh, poll coming into this and right now so ray ogden was sitting at one 120 she's ranked number one that doesn't mean she's going to rank wrestle 120 at all tonight as uh, if she does there could be a good matchup who knows if uh, julia adarujo speaking of quality wrestlers that's a name that anybody in wrestling recognizes who that is she's sitting here ranked number two at 115 but you know talk about uh, julia is ultimately uh, she's uh, top notch top notch exactly but she is ranked number two well so what did that say about that weight class well she got her first national ranking for a north dakota girl uh, from Bismarck and so well from Bismarck High that is because we had one from Legacy get nationally ranked earlier but she did take two losses on the year to the same girl from Napoleon so uh, sh uh, is yeah, Alexis Schneider, Schneider yeah yep, Alexis, Napoleon, Alexis exactly. Schneider couldn't think of her first name but I tell you what that has been a battle it was in the finals of the Rotary Tournament then last week 
at the Castleton tournament. A three to one victory is all it was. So she's got some work to do. You know, she's in the match, but it takes it takes a takedown to win it. You know, Bismarck High, you know, has a lot of people around her. I think everybody around her is really getting better as I watch everybody just start moving up the rankings. Tonight's duel brought to you in part, fans, by the Planet Pizza. They've been probably serving the Magic City for over 25 years. Hopefully they get one down here in Bismarck at some time soon. <laughs> They're the largest laser tag playground in the region. Mouthwatering pizza and wings and the 30-inch galactic pizza that are out of this world. Call and order now, 852-1700. Planet Pizza's out of this world. And so now, as we get started, I don't know if they had a, the, the coin flip. That's one of the interesting parts about wrestling is they do a little coin flip and... They're going to bring the captains out, and uh, what, what, what does this mean in wrestling? Okay, for those people watching, when they flip here in a competitive duel, there's certain matches you want the other team to go out first. So you see who they're putting out on the mat first. So if they'll they'll flip centuries, they'll pick an odd or even number. So every even match. So the first match that comes out on the on the mat, no matter what weight, but it looks like they're going to start at 100, that would be your first number one weight class. So that's an odd. So if you pick the odd, that means that the other team then has to step on the mat first. And so... So it makes a huge difference as sometimes some, the boys duel. And it could make a difference in the century duel tonight. Yeah, that's exactly that's right. right. We have so many boys. and so many boys and girls that have weighed in at similar weight classes. And so you have an opportunity. Uh, if somebody else, say Century, puts a person out first, like they're doing right now, this is the 100-pound weight class. This is Sydney Narlock. Sydney, and one thing they didn't give us, which is really unfortunate, we don't have rosters of age group ages but they're all really young i looked at it and it was f i'm like why why are they, are they all freshmen yeah well, that's female <laughs> yep. so they, they didn't have a separate spot so that's something they'll have to fix on track wrestling so that all of the teams have to input their grades for their wrestlers too and it's just something that's been missed this year you know really really pushing things and narlock got a an open match there so century gets six so then she'll shake hands with the head coach of the demons well, that's not even that, was, that, wasn't, that wasn't Scott Nolan with the big heavy beard yeah. that came out and actually shook hands. Yeah, was one of the assistants over there. Absolutely. And so now we'll come out with the second match tonight. This is Vivian Backer. She's 10 and 14, and Izzy Owens is 23 and 13 for the Demons. Well, you start looking at stuff like this. It, Izzy Owens has really improved, but you look at the people around her, her having to wrestle, you know, Thielgis and having to wrestle, you know, Araggio all, all the time. Those two. You know, makes her much so much better. And the thing I like about Izzy Owens is that she's been aggressive, you know, and I, I like her style. I think that's part of the family. You know, you have the Owens, the Owenses, you have a Bridger, an older brother, yep. wrestles on the varsity for the boys, and their dad is a an All-American for the University of Mary. So there you go, and just good tie-up right now. We'll kind of rip each other to the mat, but nothing going yet. Yes, and so this is a front head position. Right now, she's learned how to bury the head in, in there. She's got her in trouble. She's got her in an inside cradle. So Izzy Owens is on top right now of Vivian Backer. Looking for a fall to tie this oh, duel is, is tied. What you'll, well, no what you'll notice in a lot of these matches, the girls are so aggressive and they're still you know, quite new to the sport in a lot of senses. There's a lot of pins. Yeah, and that's a pin. So be ready. At the 109 mark of the first period, which is wrestlers go, you go backwards. <laughs> so 51 seconds into the match. So that'll be a pin at 51 seconds of match one. It's six to six now after two matches. They've announced the Century Patriot. That's Bailey Lentz. She's four and 14 the season. And then for the Demons at 110 will be Maggie Thielgis. She's 23 and 13. That is a load of matches that she's wrestled this year. Well, I tell you what, this is a girl that I was not expecting to really improve. And I tell you what, this is one that I talked to the coaches that, you know, you start noticing the girls and they work a move in the room. Look, it's the same move, doing the front head snap, and then takes her in that inside cradle and has her in trouble already boy, immediately has her down on the ground back points and boy this is not a good position right now guaranteed this is what they're working the room another six 21 second fall wow so 21 seconds into the first period that's maggie field she'll get six points that'll take the lead now for the demons to 12 to 6 after three matches a little reset game the first one narlock came out she shook hands she got six points and then it was a stick by izzy owens at the 51 second mark and then maggie field just you blink and now and she's got a, a pin at the 21 second mark so coming out here this is a big one now we have annie flieger she's two and eight for century and this is what we talked about julia Ararujo. she's 30 and two ranked number two in the state of north dakota nice little sweep single well, they definitely got the mic up nice and loud here. You can probably hear everything behind us. <laughs> That's all right. And so driving a chicken wing, looking for a fall early here again. 
And that oh, was quick fall. too. 23 seconds. So 23 seconds of the first. So the last three pins have been under two minutes in total for the Demons. <laughs> so 18 to six now for Bismarck High. Julia moves to 31 and two. Anna will fall down to two and nine. At the 120 mark, man, this is just moving. Century brings Ray Ogden. She's ranked number one as we talked about that. And Lena O'Rone for the Demons. She's 15 and 13. Well, you're gonna notice one thing about Ogden is she likes to shoot. She's got a great high crotch. She gets low, she has some low singles. She also likes to power. So she, she'll do some underhooks, she'll do a Russian tie, but then she likes to throw. There's that sweep single. You know, they've been working a lot of rooms. The thing I like about her, she's, she's gonna be ready for at the college level. She's going to the University of Sioux Falls. Is committed to go there to wrestle, which is pretty cool. Take down for Rez. She's ahead two to zero. One of the downfalls of wrestling is sometimes there's not enough breaks for any commercials. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have to talk fast and in between. We got lots of time, I think, in between the uh, girls and boys, so we'll get that, our sponsors you need that in. Speed reader for those commercials, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> no, th and, and you're going to notice that, again, some of these are mismatches, and, you know, you see such a a difference between them. And that's going to take, as wrestling gets better in the state, you can see that, that gap narrow. It's a big match here for Lena, though, ultimately to come out here and see how she does against the number one ranked, one ranked wrestler in the state. Yeah. And again, it's one of these no fear factors. you got to be able to go out and wrestle anybody. She's got that left arm in a, in a chicken wing. and Yep. Call it an arm bar. And then you see through the chicken wing in after that. Yep. Grab that far wrist. Another thing you'll notice about the girls, you'll see a lot of flexibility. They'll bend in two, three ways at once. And, and that's, it makes them that much harder to pin. So they have to secure their moves solid. And, and then, you know, every, every move has to be, how could you best, best say it, is just put on correctly. Lena working hard. Now she's flipped her over on her back, getting back points. She already counted two, so that's three, three back points right now. A little cross face butcher, ran it around. Yeah, that was not really, I mean, that wasn't a great pinning combination right there. It was a good job by Lena getting out of it, but still three back points. So 5 0 after the first period. Fans gain this uh, duel tonight. It's brought to you by Jersey Mike's. Make sure to vote for this week's Jersey Mike's Player of the Week on the PSP Facebook page. Jersey Mike's is a sub above. It can be wrestler, it can be a hockey player, and it can be a basketball player. So we're equal opportunity for all of them. Well, I, I like how they promote the sport. I watch Facebook, and you, you put those athletes out with that little certificate and some of the things they've been proud to be be sponsored, basically, not sponsored, but be the athlete of the game. It's yeah, cool. quick takedown by Ray Ogden, a little leg grab. She's up 7-0 to zero now in the second period. She's just a confident wrestler watching her. Oh, very. Very. She goes out and she has an attitude and she wants to take it out there. You can just tell, right? Yep. The, the hair, the dark hair, the hair all over. I mean, just the strength, all the different things she's got with her uh, well, arm, the hand, the knee, the, you know, she just, she's a battled, battle-tested yes. wrestler. Well, I, I know Ray pretty good. She was over her house since about eighth grade and she's okay. a senior now. <laughs> she's the same grade as my boy and she okay. was real, real good friends with my son's best friend. And she was over the house and she wrestled as an eighth grader for the junior high. Then came up and gave it a shot and hurt her knee quite a bit as a freshman. Got a few matches in, but she was the only girl, think of that, in the century room. And but and she had to battle boys a lot, so you see this aggressiveness when yeah. she gets to face girls. It makes a huge difference. Oh, nice move. Good strength right there. Power to flip. And she's developed so well. There's a fall. That's a foul. 41 seconds into the second period. Actually, 119, so it's so three, three. 319 fall. I always go backwards. 319 fall for <laughs> Ray Ogden, so that was expected. So now it's 18 to 12. Last time we saw the Demons wrestle, they wrestled Legacy, and boy, what a match we had there. It went down to the last match, and that'll be an open category as Cambria Feist comes out at 23 and 9. She takes the win as that'll be a six point win there for the Demons. So they are now up 24 to 14 through one, the 125 mark. 130, Century has another open. So have they announced that yet? So this is Tegan Rittenbach at 20 and 11 this season. There'll be an, it's, yeah, they said Tegan, but it's Tegan. And so that'll be another six points for the Demons. So now it's 30 to 12 for Bismarck High. We'll move on, they haven't flipped the match 
uh, wait but, yet. But we're up to 135. As girls, they go 5.5 pound increments up to 145, and they switch to 10. So now we'll get to 1, 135, where Cadence Cook, 12 and 19 for the Patriots. She'll take on Madison Reams, a ranked wrestler for the Demons at, at number five. She's 22 and 11. Well, I tell you what, this is a big matchup for Cadence. Cadence is really developed as the season goes. She, she picks up wins here and there. She's one of those that is, is a spurt wrestler. Basically, she, she fires off and scores points in, in flurry. She does have a nice high crotch. Sometimes she, in some matches, she starts, pa she pauses and she kind of like, when she wrestles better wrestlers. When, yeah, she's when she goes against girls that she knows she can beat, she's, she dominates. So it's one of those she has to get over that hump to wrestle these wrestlers that are tough but not that much better than her. Yeah, good takedown there for Madison. She goes up 2-0 as Cadence Cook tried to get up to that tripod but got pushed to the mat by Reams. And so it's one move at a time. It's one of those where you got to find successes. There we go, stand oh, up. Oh, nice. nice job, stand up. Uh, escape for Cadence Cook, so one point escape, 2-1. to one. Reams leads Cook in the first oh, period. She's going to try to throw her. She's got her over the top of her hip. This is a good position. Oh, step back. you got to have the hip in front. you got to get your head out of there. <laughs> you know, battling back oh. and forth, these two girls. Well, I, I tell you what, they both knew they weren't in a good position being behind that because you get behind the hip and you get tossed right through the air, which was good. They both recognized that. Got themselves in a better position now. Well, I like, I like that Camry went in and was going to try to throw her. You know, that's... That's basically what you need to do when you're the underdog sometimes. Yeah, Cadence Cook at 12 and 9. Madison Reams, just an eighth grader. Tried There's a, little a dump there. She can get her. Oh, she got to keep it at the elbow. She can pop out there. Oh, she oh, had couldn't it. Couldn't quite squeeze that leg, and she had the takedown instead. It's Reams gets a takedown instead. So 4 to 1, Reams goes up. Trying to throw some legs in, but it's very high. She needs to get behind the arms. Cadence doing a good job trying to circle out. She's got the legs out, but she's very high. Just she's has to headhunt and catch her. Oh, coach is telling her to get under the arms. Nolan came right out to the mat and said, get under those arms. <laughs> As Reams ends the first period, she's up 4-1 to one over Cadence Cook. Good, good activity and action in that first period. Well, I expected this to be one of the better matches tonight. It's not very unbalanced. I've seen these two wrestle before, and... Cook is just getting better. And so it's one of these, this is a confidence builder. Yeah, so you look at her record at 12 and 19. Sometimes it's just you need to wrestle in order to get better. And at 31 matches now, uh, probably she's probably better than her record indicates. Oh, there's that fireman's carry trying to dump her. She needs to pull her arm out. She did. There we go, the cross face. And she can spin, get by, uh, within one. There we go. Oh, good good job by Cadence Cook and turning that around for a two-point takedown. She trails now by one, four to three. Tried the same move that Cook did with that little fireman's dump, but Cook did a good job getting her leg back and sprawling. There's that stand-up. Escape on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Now it's five to three. Now she's going to Bismarck High's move. That front head snap. It looks like they've been working in the room. Scores. <laughs> Try to give her two-point takedown. So now we got seven to three. Yep. Tripod stand-up. It's one thing they start focusing on. They, some, some, it's new, actually, to the sport. It used to never be you know, use the tripod stand-up. A kind of power half trying to get her to walk over. Oh, she's got her in trouble. She flips that hip. Good job of walking over. Nice job underneath there by Cadence Cook. Oh, potentially okay. dangerous. Elbow going above the head a little bit. Good job fighting that off because her hip got flipped there for a second. She was in danger. And these two are battling. The BNC Max scoreboard has the Demons leading 30 to 12 in the overall duel, and then 7 to 3 this match with Madison Reams, the number five ranked wrestler in the state of North Dakota, against Cadence Cook. And this has been a good match. Cadence needs to get that stand up again that she had earlier. She had a nice aggressive stand up and, and turned by getting hand control. She's got to get hand control. She so really that, works a lot on the top, too. She doesn't you know, keep switching from one to the next. Oh. Oh, I'm tired. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's both girls working so hard. Well, what's interesting there is that they broke apart and it looked like it'd be an escape, but there wasn't really loss of major control. Sometimes you can fall down, they hop back on, there's not enough time. Oh, nice little cradle. Nice cradle. Oh, she's in trouble. That, that shoulder looks down. Oh, good job breaking it. Squirmed out of that, but they will get some back points, These but not yet until it's still in the same move. Yep. Three back points. <laughs> It takes the BNC Bank scoreboard up to 10-3 to for Madison Reams. Seven seconds in the second period. 
Oh, oh. Another potentially dangerous. Now, what? at what point in time, how many times can you get a potentially dangerous before uh, as, you get a as, point? As many as there are. Okay. Yep, they just stop it. You know, they can keep doing it. But what's interesting is some people are really limber. I, I've got a buddy that can put his whole arm behind his head. It looks like it hurts, <laughs> but it, it doesn't hurt him. But so It's not me. It's, it's, what, it lo it's what it looks like, yeah. As Reams... Leads now at the BNC Bank scoreboard. She's up after that good second period, 10 to 3 over Cadence Cook. If you just joined us, folks, this match is brought to you by the UPS store, located in South Broadway in Minot. Open Monday through Friday, and 8:30 to 7, and Saturday 8:30 to 3. Well, one of the big things as a coach here, you got to build confidence, and again, it's again, it's one thing at a time. It's simple moves. You know, the ones that you work the most in the practice, as you know, Bismarck High must work a very tough half. They're staying in good control. You know, sometimes you have some freedom, but guess what? If you only show the girls so many moves, they only do so many. Right. So it depends how you expand, you know, your room and your technique, what you want to do, what the teams. And, and every girl has a different level of what they can bring, you know, how, what moves they can learn and change. That is correct. And not just girl, guy, every wrestler. Yep. She, I, what I like about Rims, she just keeps moving. One thing isn't working, she jumps to something else, tries something else. The power app, she's tried a lot. Now she's got her flipped over yep. her back. She's got her tired. Oh, good job fighting back out of that. Can you step back over, do a half back on her? She's got her back in trouble. She leans back. She's got two-point near oh. fall. And she's got her in this headlock, but she's got to pull that elbow and get her hip out. This other girl's holding her legs with her legs. So two-point reversal of 12 to 5 right now. She's got a minute, but she's got to hop all the way off to the side and pull that back, that head back. Oh, she lost the arm. Good job, good job by Cook. Getting that reversal, 12-5, she trails to Madison but, Reams. But has her in trouble here with a, with a nice little, can drive well, she this. She is really working. And chicken wing, driving the hips under that body. Got her flat. Got three back points, that brings it to 12-8 to eight now with 35 seconds to go. Cadence Cook working so hard. No, she was in trouble of getting pinned just seconds ago. Then had her in trouble and smelt. All of a sudden, she got her second win, too. Smelt blood. Absolutely. <laughs> 22 seconds left in this match as Cook has position on top against Madison Reams at one number five. This would be an upset. And Stalin warning the bottom girl. Not that that matters at this short amount of time. Eight seconds. You need to have a... A pin here in five, four. Oh, not going to do it. What a but job by Cadence Cook, though. she got to be really proud of herself, how she came back being down 12 to 3, brought the score to 12 to 8. Big improvement. Love to see it. So 12 to 8, just three points there. So it takes the Demons to 33 to 12. What a nice, good match, though. Folks, the, tonight's match is brought to you also by Press which, which Orthodontics, specializing in braces and Invisalign for all ages. We offer free consultations and financing options that make it easy to take your smile to the next level. Call 852-2646. So now we're at an open uh, Paige Bumgarner. Too bad we didn't get a chance to watch her. She's 27-5, and five, ranked number two in the state of North Dakota. She will get an open... And so it's 39 to 12. That was at the 140 spot. And we'll also have another one as Aubrey Overson. She's 14 and eight in the season, ranked number six. She will get a forfeit of five or six points. So that's 45 to 12 now in the BNC bowling. They just keep clicking them away. And now we'll go back to, finally, this could be a good match here at, at 155 as Paige Spoomer Spomer ranked number three in the state at 17 and 14. She will take on Lily Lugo at one and nine. Well, Spoomer's been ranked anywhere between three and six, as high as number three. I think she had, in the stuff that I looked at lately, she's probably around that five spot. But what happens here is Spoomer needs to get Century back in this. Not that they can win the duel, but just get their attitude going, because there's going to be some tough matches after this one, too. And we have 170, 190, and 250 after this one. Oh, nice little snap down. Here we go, Use snaps her down, spins behind. Take down two points for Spomer. Well, she just active right away. Oh, just has Lugo on her back. Just has it tight too, has that arm sucked in. And that is gonna be a pin. So at 44 seconds of the first period, we have a pin. So 45 to 18. The Demons lead in the dual match over the 
Century Patriots fans. This match also brought to you by North, Northern Plains Heating and Air. Northern Plains Heating and Air has over 25 years of experience as your heating and air experts as the factory authorized dealer for Aeroseal. There's no other choice to seal your heating and air game than Northern Plains Heating and Air. Find them online at Northern Plains dash planes.com we got we are right in the middle here fans we are right in the middle we got people banging around us we got you, you can't you can't see it but if you have any bumping you'll you'll know so now we're in the 170 Jalen Jetty for the Patriots 11 and 11 and Lily Bishop for Bismarck High she's 7 and 8 oh she can drive her to her back here oh she did so two point takedown and right away she has her in bad position that's this is Jaylee Jetty So they'll get three points, so two for a takedown, plus three point near fall. And Bismarck High does have some other wrestlers in some of these spots. I believe they're letting some of their other wrestlers who haven't got a lot of varsity experience to get out in front of the crowd. Again, now she's just gonna work on top. Good hand control on bottom. Lily Bishop doing a good job. And you see, the, the, again, the confidence level of some Lily, uh, Jaylee Jetty, this, just a wrestler that looks like she's a little more seasoned right now. Mm -hmm. She's driving a nice half. And sometimes, you know, as this goes, you know, you get a little fire underneath you. You get that first taste of getting them down to the mat. And then in a, in a position like this where you got the boys wrestling after you, which is an awesome opportunity for these girls to have people come and get a chance to see how great of a, a sport this is right now and the girls wrestling. You know, it's kind of funny. I've, I've watched girls now wrestle for the last few years, and it's such an evolution. You know, as they get better and better, you know, the numbers start increasing. You see parents aren't so surprised with their little girls out there trying to beat another girl and, and doing things that are physical. Uh, three more back points. That makes it 8-0, to zero, Jaylee Jetty, in the first period. 23 seconds left on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Well, I tell you what, you know, some girls are just made to wrestle, and they're not necessarily always basketball players. And yep. they've, over, over the years, you know, I, I, I can say I've got my, my fill of basketball this week. I watched, I watched the LSU-Tennessee women's game. Okay. And then I watched the Century game the same night, Century oh, yeah. Mandan. And, and I, thought, <laughs> I thought to myself that, man, how, how many times, you know, do these girls have to sit off to the side and watch basketball and not have an opportunity to actually get out and wrestle? Absolutely. So, eight to zero after the first period in the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Your life is busy while making money. Your, well, we'll make money managing your money easy with locations in North Dakota and Arizona. Well, they got an eight zero lead here. Jaylee Jetty again to go back to that snap that she did earlier. I noticed Lily tried that front head snap that they've been working in the room and has what we call a bulldog. Doing a, doing a double under and then snapping her into this. And actually can get her in trouble. Can she spin around and score two? Now makes it eight to two. Nice takedown right there as Lily Lugo gets a takedown. Lily Bishop on this one. Lugo was the last one who got pinned, my bad. Yeah, it's fine. But now again, one thing at a time. Now we the best moves on top. I always say that for the because I even tell the varsity guys experience, sometimes they're trying things that they're not their best at. You always try your best moves first. She got the takedowns, like, okay, now what am I gonna do? Look, there's good strength oh, right here for Lily Bishop. Got her in trouble. Boy, just powering her over, you gotta walk it over. Keep driving. Can get herself a pin here. Well, this would be a little bit of an upset, I think, too, right? Yes, definitely. Good match right now, you got 50 seconds, so. Jaylee Jetty really has got to, oh, oh, and it is a pin, so. Three, three, 16. Yep. Oh, that is a big, big victory right there. And you talk about momentum. Back. Momentum, my goodness, for Lily Bishop moves her record to eight and eight. As Jaylee Jetty Jet will even her record at 11 and 11 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Well, here's another girl that's just, I tell you what, she's going to be a force. This Cambry Anderson, I've watched her the last few weeks, and she looks like a wrestler. Yeah, Cambry Anderson's number four ranked wrestler in the state at, at 28 and 6, and Michaela Stordalen, she's 10 and 18. And right away, what she, Cambry Anderson comes out and she's active, gets that takedown. Well, she goes hard. Nice quick takedown. 
Store Dolan just an eighth grader. And you know, it's interesting as these weights go, that she's battling and she, yeah, she's not tall. Escape. Two to one in the BNC Bank scoreboard. Overall, it's 51 18 in the duel. The Demons lead it. You know, I've always thought it was kind of a disadvantage. You know, if you have somebody that can snap you underneath, but that's what Bismarck High does. That's what stordahl has got herself in trouble here a little bit. She doesn't want to be underneath there unless she wants to shoot through it. Oh, oh my. Step oh. to a quick trip. Oh, my. There's a fall. It's, got, it's kind of in an oh, awkward position yeah. to get the, the, I don't know if she can get her back all the way down the way she has her arms held yeah. behind. All you need is th that shoulder blade, and it must be close, but it's, like you said, oh, there she got, turned the other way. Yeah, I think they got the one arm she has, yep, way underneath it. She has it. to grab this wrist and take it toward her head. But there she goes, like just like that. I don't know if the camera saw that. There it is. There it is. Wow, well, that's a physical trip. So 108, just like you said, very physical by Cambry Anderson, number four. Well, I want to see who's one, two, and three yeah. in that weight class, my goodness sake as that makes it 57 to 18. One thing you gotta keep in mind here as we're watching this, you gotta keep in mind for the jobbers moving and storage move of the game as that, that's, we'll talk about that afterwards. The move of the game, tonight's move of the game sponsored by Jobbers Moving and Storage. So as you got to remember those as we're wow. going along here. I, we'll, I won't forget that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one right there. And now we have the 250 pound weight classes. Belinda Perry at 18 and 8, number 5 in the state of North Dakota from the Patriots. And then Brinley Beekler, she's 20 and 11, so number 4. So 4 versus 5. So this sets up to be a good one. I tell you what, I did not get to see these guys wrestle early in the season. And it could be a good battle here. Usually I get a chance to watch one or the other, so I kind of have an idea. Now, I did see uh, Perry wrestle last weekend in uh, Aberdeen. Okay. And she had some pretty good matches. Again, that's when she was aggressive. And, and there was some good competition down there with Peer, who's the number one girls team in South Dakota. So They finished so fourth, the Patriots did, with 96 points. And that, and, and that wasn't too bad, but, but that Peer team is just really good in South Dakota. We had, I don't know if Century won a match against a peer girl, except for probably Ray Ogden. <laughs> so who, these, these who girls. lost to the same girl she's lost. She's only got two, two losses. Okay, on the she's lost. lost twice to the same girl. Same girl from Lemon, South Dakota, yep. These two girls just kind of trying to figure out what's well, what to do. Both girls just been kind of battling back and forth. Well, if, if trying that snap, but that snap's not working. She tried it a couple times. Well, there's going to be a lot of pummeling, but as long as Perry's backing up, she's going to get warned for stalling here shortly. This referee is not a fan of people not being aggressive. Oh, oh my goodness. Got just, a, a quick trip, but did not get behind her. Still has the headlock. Oh, no, she's got to spin behind. So that'll be a two. Did you give her two points? Yeah, she gave her two-point takedown. So Perry leads Beekler of the Demons 2-0 to zero in the first period on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Well, the big thing there is she lost balance, and she got herself in trouble, did a good job getting back down to her belly. A lot of times when you're, they're younger, get to your belly. You know, you start when those hips start flipping, you get in trouble. We'll start giving them, we'll call them we're going to call them serve pro takedowns going forward <laughs> from here. So as that takedown in the first period, we'll call it a serve pro takedown 24-7 emergency service. Trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water, cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro. We have serve pro free throw line, a power play for hockey, and we're going to call it a takedown for wrestling. Sounds good. So it's 2-0. Perry leads after that takedown. They'll both start up in the second period. This is the last match of the day. The Demons have been uh, led all the way except for the 6-0 with, with Sidney Lar Narlock stepped out and took that open weight class at the 100-pound. Well, Brinley's been aggressive. I like how she's pressing in, making Perry do something, because the referee here is going to favor her, even though she's down, because she's the one that's being aggressive. She's pushing the action. So in a situation like this, Perry needs to get, get some angles and get some duck-unders, do what's called elbow passes to get angles, not just push away or back up. The pummeling there, she's getting underhook. Brindley doing a good job coming in. So when you say pummeling, what, 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 what's, what do they, when does that mean that okay, they're pummeling? So pummeling is when sometimes you know how you notice they're trying to grab the head and snap. Yep. And so getting back inside. See how she's pushing her arm off? Yep. And then go, there she got this headlock opportunity. Oh, it's all balanced. Which way? Oh, the edge. That's strength right there by Perry. Powered her down. Now this is some rules that have changed over the years that so you can get points while they're out of bounds as long as both of your knees are inside. Now, if by any chance Perry's knees go outside that circle, then the pin cannot happen. Well, she's keeping inside. She's doing a good job kind of knowing where she is. A little situational awareness, recognizes that, hey, I'm on the edge of the mat. 
She is squeezing hard and she's trying needs, to she lean needs back. To circle her in and just, I would stay right there because guess what? You're just going to wear her out. 39 seconds in the second period. The referee looks to make sure both her knees are now they're out of bounds because her second knee went outside those lines. So you'll get a two point takedown, a serve pro takedown, and then you'll get three back points, correct? Yep, you'll have three near fall points. So it makes it seven to zero in the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Belinda Perry leads Brinley Beekler of the Demons. This will be the last match of the girls, and then we'll have the premier chiropractic intermission, and we'll get right in the, in the boys. They don't mess around in wrestling. You just keep things moving. Well, I tell you what, when you have two, three duels, sometimes in some days they want to they want to get out of here too. <laughs> Refere referees have to work hard. There's an old oh, quick roll, but might have got herself in a bad position here. She's got her in. She just has to actually put her knee down behind that head because as she reaches back for that leg, it's not a good thing to do. No, because they use but that, that leg to walk over on her. Yep, yeah. Just like it's a, a leg half. Right. That's all she had to do is put her knee over her head, but you feel kind of in a weird position. And Looks she like did. she's trying to get a side roll, which is something you teach heavyweights at every level. She did get three back, she's three more got back it. points there. She's almost got it. She's got to pull her arm out. She's in trouble. Ooh. Oh, did not get it. I think it was still the. Uh, didn't quite get the right angle to get any back points, Blanche, so it's going to be 10-0. Blanchard's yelling, get your arm out of there. He's yelling, <laughs> you pull it out of there. Oh, careful. You oh, pull yeah. it out, you're going to knock our stuff <laughs> over, John. <laughs> the big knees here. Stay tuned in between. Then we'll have our premier chiropractic inter intermission. The Dr. Kirk Mason, Dr. Cody Haugen, and Dr. Barry Perry, Becky perry Domries. They can be found at premierchiropracticnd.com. That'll be in between as we kind of get you set up for the boys. It'll be an intermission, it'll be a boys pregame, a Shields pregame, so we'll combination things in wrestling. But the he, assistant coach is getting after it over here. I like it that he's, he must be the 250-pound the yeah, that's, that's, yep. a, a coach. Uh, yeah, he's one of the coaches. Kurt, so, Kurt Hawks is his name over Kurt there. Kurt Hawks, oh, I remember Kurt Hawks, absolutely. He yeah. was back in my day. <laughs> yeah, that's who that is over there. But you notice, well, Perry is, while well, she's gotten ahead this match, is when she got aggressive. That the reason she got that takedown is she wasn't backing down. She's now got a double over here. She wants that trip. And, She's she trying to help. and you actually get yourself in trouble. I don't know if you want to do that trip so much there. Because if she falls herself, she's got her own arms trapped. So minutes, six seconds left in this 250-pound match. I would do a lot of pummeling and a lot of circling. Oh, trying to trying an arm throw. Oh, nice. Kicking up the leg and now has her on her back. It's going to be a big win for Century here. The Patriots. lower the lower seed yeah, or the lower lower ranked. Got her in a tough, tough spot right now. This Beekler, oh, she saved it there, though. She did not get, I think they got her some back points. That'll be two, point, two more points for takedown. That makes it 12 to 0 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Still got, I don't know, did they give her back points I, on that? I couldn't quite tell if he I got the count know. or not. He's been waiting. And he gave the three near fall. It's a tech fall. Oh, yeah, it makes it 15. So three point near fall makes it 15 to 0 for Belinda Perry. That was impressive as she was ranked number five at 18 and 8, and Brinley Beekler number four. So that'll be a final now. That'll go take it to 57 to 24. And that's where 20, we will 20, end. 23. It's five for a tech fall. Oh, yep. just five. I'm sorry. Okay. So sometimes you don't want to do that, right? If you're in a match that yep. you need more points. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so five points. I knew that. I just seen if you were listening. Okay. <laughs> so we are now in the live post game show. As let's get some scores updated here as the visitor is the Patriots. Correct. 23. Oh, we got a, as we produce our own shows, fans, uh, you got to bear with us as we do it all here. Color, camera, you name it. We're doing the whole shebang right now. Brought to you uh, here as uh, we're in our, our post-game show. Our, as the Demons are victorious 20, 57 to 23. We're in our planning team financial advisor shots crossroads post-game show. Whether you are looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm and business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work towards business succession. Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward your achieving your financial goals. Visit, visit, visit us online at Planning Team, planning team Financial .com. So one thing we didn't get a chance to do is talk to the coaches and maybe when as we have an intermission here and uh, we will do our sports clip and our player of the game and our sports clip or in our drivers moving and storage move of the game. We'll take a first break. We can come back. We will get you more into the planning team financial advisors and shots crossroads post game show you're listening to high school wrestling on the PSP network whether you're looking for a full service financial plan 
or planning for farm or business succession. Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full-service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's eggtastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throw in some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. It's time for the Shots Crossroads and Planning Team Financial Advisors postgame show. Now for a look at game stats and analysis. Let's go to the postgame show. Back at the postgame show where the Demons defeated the Patriots 57 to 23 in the first duel, the girls uh, duel as Bismarck High dominant throughout that one as the Demons moved to four and two overall in the, and, and four and two in the conference. The Patriots dropped to two and four and two and four in the conference. Uh, a couple things we got to do here before we finish this one as we are in the shots crossroads and planning team financial advisors post game show shots crossroads your post game headquarters order online at shotscrossroads.com and planning team financial advisors helping clients work toward financial freedom freedom first thing we'll do is we'll do the player of the game <clears throat> or excuse me the, the move of the game the jobbers moving and storage move of the game tonight's move of the game is sponsored by jobbers moving and storage jobbers can help you move across town or across the country locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo and Aberdeen find them online at jobberswarehouse.com what would be our jobbers moving and storage move of the game tonight well I tell you what Cambry Anderson being so aggressive she went out there dominated did a double underhook and then did a trip straight to the back you the know, 108 pin and yep. that, that was she was just dominant that oh. was a great move too. over store, over store doll and I felt kind of sad for her <laughs> but it was a great move yeah it was like Cambry Anderson uh, she is our Jobbers moving in storage move of the game. They focus on the details of the process without ever losing sight of the big picture. Their efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management keeps everyone on the same page. Locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. That's Camry Anderson with the trip. And the player of the game, the wrestler of the game, the sports clip wrestler of the game. They will keep you looking your best. Check in online with a hairstylist today at sportclips.com. Our wrestler of the game is who it's Belinda Perry from Century at heavyweight beating another ranked wrestler you know that's one of the hardest things to do is to step up and get out there and get it done she did yeah that was an impressive victory a great match as they were going back and forth as uh, Belinda Perry uh, she got a two-point takedown that first period things were really close and then man it was just a dominant second and third period for her as she moved to 19 and 9 and defeated Brinley Beekler who was number four ranked a wrestler in the state of North Dakota. So big, big win there. So because of that victory, that underdog victory by Belinda Perry, she is our sport clips player or wrestler of the game. We are now going to move into our intermission. It looks like these these wrestlers are showing us their gymnastics ability. <laughs> a little bit. As they, as they warm up right now. Well, we actually have a pretty good break. So if people are out there watching, 7.15, they're going to do the senior announcements. Okay. And so we got a pretty good amount of time. And then 7.30, the duel is planned to start. Not till so 7.30. Well, so we, what, here's what we're going to do, though. So we've got some time in between here. So we're going to take uh, some breaks. We're going to kind of keep you, you, you locked in here, fans, uh, before we get to that duel. But we're going to take a a, a five-minute intermission break at 6:45. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll throw some ads on here. Come back at 
650. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to track down Scott Nolan, and we're going to try to track down one of the wrestlers, too, from Bismarck and or, and or Century, one of each, for that matter, because so we've got time in between. A great match there as the Demons are victorious, 57 to 23. You're listening to High School Wrestling on the PSP Network. For a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, poise, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's the spot, right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throw in some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. Every 10 minutes, three people in the United States will die from a preventable incident. More people are dying on our roadways and in their homes than ever before, but that's where the North Dakota Safety Council can help. Safety is our mission from the workplace to any place. We're a private nonprofit that offers more than 150 training courses that are dynamic, hands-on, and effective. From CPR and first aid to driver safety and even workplace violence preparedness, we want to make sure your loved ones come home safe each night. Go to ndsc.org to see how together we can make a difference. Back at the post game show is we're gonna get a little talent view and we got a special guest with us tonight. We have Cambry Anderson. What a great match you had. Cambry Anderson wrestling 190 ranked number four in the state of North Dakota. You move your record up to 29 and six. And I mean, that was a dominant performance. You came out tonight. You looked like you were on a mission. Oh yeah, I definitely was. 
I mean, is there anything special when you walked into this match tonight that you had in mind? I don't know if you knew who you were going to wrestle, Michaela Stort Allen or not, but ultimately, when you stepped in the match tonight, did you say, hey, I want to try this move, I want to try this move? Um, I just want to get prepared for, like, my big match. Like, I'm... So what's your big match? Phoenix lends this from Legacy, so I'm... Oh. I'm getting dominant there. Okay, so you got somebody in mind oh, yeah. that you're working on in terms of moves and whatever Most else. Definitely. Go ahead, John. Okay, just quick question. All the rest of the girls called it Big Country. They got a nickname for you? Oh, yeah. Um, my aunt came up with that name, and it just stuck with me ever since. So. <laughs> okay, so how do you think your improvement through the season has gone? What do you, what do you contribute that to? Mm, definitely my coaches. They like, oh, they're hard on me. They push me to who I've become just this year. Like, they've, I've gotten so much better, so. You know, you come off to that, that big tournament victory this last weekend. Or oh, yeah. this, and, I mean, talk a little bit about that. I mean, that was a, a huge victory for you and also for the Demons winning that, that tournament to come out, get you set up for this, the state tournament and West Region tournament here. It's... There's a lot of matches for you on oh, that yeah. one. Is there anyone in particular that, that you had in mind in terms of, you know, that maybe the championship match that I don't know who you were wrestling against at the time, but somebody that, you you know, how, how important that was and, you know, something you can talk about with that. You no, know, I just went in there with a good mentality. I, I wasn't really worried about who I was wrestling. I'm, I don't mind who I'm wrestling. I just, I just go in there. I'm going to get that win. I'm going to get that win at that time. So, so who's a person in the, in the, in the, the wrestling room that you kind of are battling with right now that's making you better? Um, I wrestle a lot with my coaches and um, Brindley Beekler, our heavyweight out here. I wrestle with her. I try to make her better too as we go along, push her. She pushes me too, because yeah, she's pushing me. And you have such a young team. I mean, there you oh, have yeah. seventh graders, eighth graders, ninth graders. How is the makeup of that when who is the true leader on your team in the locker room? Julia. Julia is like, She's she's so young. She has the best mentality. She just she's just everything for what her age is. She's just she's a true leader. She's something else, true, yeah. A true leader out oh, of eighth grader. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, cool. and for you now going into the state tournament, you said you have one match in mind. Are there other matches that you can think of in terms of people? No, and I'm not rankings? worried. To, I'm not worried about those people. I'm worried about that one person in general. <laughs> So you, your record right now is 29 and 6. So you do have six losses of the season. They're not all to the same person. Are they? They're. <laughs> they're you don't want to think of that? Uh, yeah. I don't I'm, know. I did or not. I'm just curious. That's you, in the past. That's I'm not worried about that. Abs right that's now. awesome. Good for you. And yeah. so we're talking to Cambry Anderson as she was victorious tonight. And she was actually, I don't know if you know, you were our, our jobbers moving in storage move of the game with that, that, that trip. And is that something you've been working on in the. In the no, in the, it's just. I trip a lot of people. That's just like one thing that's easy for me to do. Just go there with all my power that I have and just triple. And what do you see your strength is? Is it your your strength? Is it your technique? What is it for you that makes you the best wrestler? You... I don't know. I think it's just how much strength I have. And it's like, I don't really. Being aggressive? I'm, yeah. I'm not really, yeah, just being aggressive. <laughs> You know, and last question is, we see the improvement with the Demons from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. Can you talk us through what has changed from you from the beginning of the season? How much difference has Scott Nolan, what, is, what does he have in terms of making you guys better wrestlers? Oh, he focuses on this great mentality and the mental strength. And even Coach Steckler over here, this guy walking across, <laughs> he's, he's, he's not a... He's just going to tell you straight there. He's going to say, stop crying, and you're do this and that. And he's just going to No tell crying you, and wrestling? Oh, no. That's uh, Scotty. Got that through my head pretty quick. Oh, that's amazing. Well, we thank you so much for taking the time. That's Camry Anderson. A tremendous effort today. She was victorious in her match over Michaela Stordal. And it was a pin in one minute and eight seconds as she was victorious. And Demons are victorious tonight to 57 to 23. We'll take another uh, post-game time out. When we come back, we'll, we'll start talking about the next match as you're listening to PSP Wrestling, or wrestling on the PSP Network. I don't remember where this goes. I don't know. Are you sure it wasn't clicking and not a zoo, zoo? I think your quash litter bell's stuck. Do you even have insurance? If we soak it, so it should be good. <laughs> no matter how much you know or don't know about your vehicle, trust the experts at Tires Plus. Real answers from real mechanics. Inspections are free. 
to ensure your vehicle is always in peak condition. Thinking service, think Tires Plus. We're back after that short intermission as we are now going to move into the pregame show, the boys match. We still might try to get a hold of uh, head coach Scott Nolan, talk to him as we got some time here because we don't start this next batch until um, 7.15. Um, but ultimately, it's just a good match there as we're going to, uh, let's see, let's move into the boys match. Here. We're in the Shields pregame show for the boys match. We'll move on as Shields offers clothing, footwear, and gear for all your passions from fishing to fashion, Shields is dedicated to offering you the best retail experience. Stop sporting goods, hunting and fishing gear, clothing, and more at Shields of Minot in Bismarck. Uh, Shields is our pregame sponsor, and uh, we'll wrap that one up. That was just uh, some great matches there. As we'll give you kind of a quick recap, Narlock started out with an open 6-0. to zero. Then it was 6-6 six to six as Izzy Owens defeated a Vivian Backer at a, at a fall in the 108 of the first. Then Maggie Thiel just, she had a 21-second fall over Bailey Lentz. Julie Ararujo, she had a 23-second fall over Anna Flieger. That took it to 18 to 6. Ray Ogden came out and kind of stopped that as she had a pin at 319 of the match, making it 18 to 12. And from there, it was all Bismarck High. It was an open uh, win for Cambria Feist, and then an open for Tegan Rittenbach, and then Madison Reams had a tough match as she outlasted Cadence Cook 12 to 8 in that tough match. And then Paige Baumgartner, Aubrey Overson, they had open matches that made it 45 to 12. And then Paige Spomer came out and she stuck Lily Lugo at 44 seconds of the first period, making it 45 to 18. And then a good match, Jaylee Jetty from the Patriots. She got a win, a fall at three, or excuse me, it was Lily Bishop got a, a she defeated Jaylee Jetty with 316 in that match. I made it 51 to 18, Bismarck High. And then we got to Cambry Anderson and we talked to her. And now we're going to get Scott Nolan as Scott Nolan steps in here. How's it going, buddy? Here, would you put the headset on there and we'll get you. So. Back in a talent view, it's way too much time with me, my face on camera, but ultimately this is the way we got to do it. And, um, Scott, what, how fun is this for you in the second year with these girls, seeing the improvement? I mean, I've, as a wrestling fan, get a chance to kind of follow from afar, but it's amazing just to see how Bismarck and how these girls have improved since the beginning of the year. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm actually a little surprised how much they've grown, too. Uh, uh, We've been fortunate with our new girls. Uh, I've said this a few times to a couple other people that uh, our new girls just kind of slid into the spots where we needed them. We had a nucleus of girls that came back from last year, and uh, so we kind of knew what we had. We had a pretty good group coming back, um, but with uh, the, the, this, uh, this new crop of girls, they just uh, happened to find the open spots that we needed them at eventually. Uh, girls are a little different than guys. You know, you give them enough time in a hard sport like this, they kind of melt down a little bit and uh, it's not real difficult for them after a month or two of, of hard training. They get, they slide into the spots sure. that they need to be at. Are you actively recruiting too? I mean, in the off season, trying to go out and walk the, walk the halls of Bismarck High or well, wherever to try to track down some wrestlers? I, I have to be honest with you. Our uh, uh, one of my assistants, Austin Eichmann, is a middle school um, phi ed teacher, and and uh, you you see up peppered up and down our lineup, we've got a lot of young yep. girls, and and last year we had a lot of young girls, and so I credit him a lot for that recruiting. Um, I know that. Um, uh, for, to some degree, maybe some of the dads still remember me, and 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 so then now it's not such a bad, uh, uh, might not be such a bad thing if if they, they they remember me from my boys' coaching days. But these girls, they don't they don't remember any of that. So uh, right. it, it's nobody just, you're saying, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah, I've really enjoyed myself. What what makes it real fun, and I found this out last year, is uh, when the girl when the girls start to buy in to what you're teaching and what you're trying to get them to to accomplish it uh, in their mindset um, then then it makes it fun and then their improvement goes up and and it just makes for a fun year and I, I enjoyed that probably the last two-thirds of last year and then all of this year it's been uh, it's it's been a joy I, I really enjoyed myself I um, 
I, I maybe had a little bit more passion left in the in, in the in the fires yet uh, to, to get back into wrestling coaching, and uh, and I think these girls have, have helped prove that to myself. So. Yeah, pretty amazing. Go ahead, John. Well, I've always I've always wondered you. You're very good at molding these young ladies. You know, what are you doing to get them to be so aggressive? That's what I'm really impressed with. Uh, well, you know. I tell them I'm blunt. I, you know, I used to talk to my guys. I said I would always say the, you know, do you want me to sugarcoat or do you want me to tell it like it is? And, and uh, the guys have always responded well to that back in my my uh, former days coaching. And sure. the girls are no different. They want to hear it. They want to they want to get better. They want to do what they have to do. And now, of course, we weed some of them out because it's a tough sport, as you you yeah. know. And uh, you know, not everybody can just stick it out. It's these girls, um, the ones that are still with us. It, it's a long season and it's grueling. And uh, um, I've noticed I've had to maybe make things a little more fun yep. than uh, the down to business type attitude uh, that I had more more of my my boys coaching career. But um, you know, I'm, I've made some adjustments, no doubt about it. Uh, I, uh, last year, I, I I never saw so many girls cry, and 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 um, Cambry of, said no crying in, in wrestling. We had she specifically told us that. Yeah. Well, Cambry's <laughs> one of them that was doing a lot of it in the past, but she's really turned the corner too. So I'm real proud of her. her oh man, she her was a fun interview. Oh yeah. Her mental toughness has has uh, grown leaps and bounds. So, so that's part of it, you know, if you can get these gritty, tougher girls, you know, and, and learn to develop uh, some of the mental toughness that wrestling needs, uh, you can really uh, shoot for a high, high sky, mm -hmm. a high limit for those girls. So last then, question I have for you too, Scott, then is there's more to, left to be done this year, obviously. You guys are ranked number one in the Dakota Grappler uh, poll right now. <coughs> what, what is that telling me you in terms of going in the state tournament? There's there's still things left to get to that point, but ultimately for you, what is the goal that your goals have now, your girls have now created for themselves based on the success they've had uh, truly this last half of the season? Yeah, I think that they believe that uh you know, if we if we show up and we and we do our jobs and we perform at the, you know out in the middle of the mat and and they reach their individual goals and that's what we strive for. Uh, we want we want to you know put put a put something out in front of them because why else do you work so hard? You have to have something to shoot for. So we want them each to have their own individual goals and if if they start to buy in what it if they start to buy in what it takes to achieve that goal, um, then we're getting out of them what they're putting in and, and it just comes out in the end. If, if we can, they can each achieve their individual goals, I think our team goals are gonna be uh, well within reach also. Well, that was fun. I appreciate you taking the time with us, Scott. And uh, Cambry Anderson was very, she did a great job for you. Very well spoken for just an eighth grader. Yeah. Um, she's uh, good. 57 to 23 victorious, the Bismarck she's Demons. Good. You're, we're in the, the pregame show, but kind of a postgame show, too, as we're just finishing up the girls' activity. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll start talking about the boys as you're listening to high school wrestling on the PSP network. Finding the right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. It's water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter.
He's been called the human sponge. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, point, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot. Right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Back at the Carl Gard Gymnasium. Dick Carl Gard, the legendary athletic director for Bismarck way back in the day. He was here when I was here, and amazing. It's pretty cool legacy to have a gym named after you, Dick Carl Gard. Uh, this is the Carl Gard Gymnasium here at Bismarck High. Has uh, just finished up the girls' uh, duel as Bismarck High defeated Century 57-23 to in that duel. And now we're moved on to the boys. This is a big matchup. This is number one versus number two. The Patriots come in, or the Demons come in 13 and one, just one loss. That was a loss earlier to Williston, um, 32 to 30 back in January 13th. And the Demons would tell you that, hey, we had a couple main mainstays out. Number one ranked Ben DeForest was out. And I think also they had Tyrus Jangula. He was also out for them as Jangler's at 18 and 8 and one of their uh, you know, stud wrestlers up in that 182-pound category. Not to say that things would have been different, but uh, the Demons are saying things would have been different. So right now, we'll take a look at our standings. We're in the Shields pregame. And so we'll look at the boys' standings. Uh, the Bismarck, or the boys, as Williston is ranked number one at 7-0 and in the West region. They're 17 and 1 overall. This is the West region standings. And then Bismarck High, 7 and 1. They're number 2. They're 13 and 1. Minot's 3 at 6 and 2. Century's 4 at 4 and 2. Jamestown is 5 at 6 and 3. Then comes Legacy at 5 and 4. St. Mary's at 4 and 5. Then Dickinson, Mandan, Watford City, and Turtle Mountain as John steps back in here as you take a look at these. Um, you know, that, that loss for Bismarck High early in the season, 32 to 30. What do you take out of that for, you know, for the Demons? Are they, are they mad about that? Are they, I mean, are they, are they making excuses? Well, you know, what is it? Well, a, lo a loss is a loss. The Demons don't lose often. So they're not going to make excuses. But I tell you what, the, the Demons are not what they, when you talk about the full lineup, they're not the powerhouse they have been in the last few years. But they had a few injuries and, uh, and a few things kind of go the wrong way in the duel, and so they end up losing. But, you know, when you look at the whole picture, you know, in the individual century could be ranked number two, but in the duels, they're probably the fourth team in the state, but they might not make the duels. Yeah, so if we take a look at this, fans, take a look at here now as we're looking at our Class A wrestling, our coach's third pole. Um, they're a little behind. I think there's one that's supposed to come out that did not come out yet. But as you take a look at this, you see in the maroon, you'll see a number of Bismarck wrestlers. They've they got what, one, two, three, four, five, six, six wrestlers that are ranked in the state of North Dakota. There's a lot more blue out there for the Patriots in terms of people ranked. They've got uh, wrestlers. They've got 11 different wrestlers that are ranked in the top six. And uh, so many times when you look at the individual uh, tournament, it's about depth. Yep. And the Patriots are showing, at least in terms of where they're stacked up here, that they've got some depth. Well, what's interesting is Century hasn't faced Bismarck except for early in the season and some of those things, and they won some of those early battles. But Bismarck High is notorious for getting so much better as the year goes, and they start picking their way back, picking their way back, and we are in the Bismarck gym. You can never, I don't care if a record could be 0-15, but they're facing a Century person that could be one in the state, they're going to give them a battle. Yeah, as we'll talk more about each one of these teams, but as I take a look at this poll, one thing to take a look at too then. So Bismarck High, as John mentioned, they're ranked number one, the century's number two. Talk about that. This is rankings by the coaches, but it's based on individuals. It's not based on the duel. That is correct. So in the individual, and they only were ranking the top six, if you take a few of the other Bismarck High guys, they probably have 11 ranked also, but they're sitting in that seven and eight spot in this dual rank in this in the previous rankings by the coaches. So they weren't like far out. And you look at Century, they got three guys that are ranked in the sixth spot and three in the fifth. So if you think Bismarck and those weight classes are sitting maybe at a seven or eight, there's not a huge separation. And so then as we look at this to the East region, there's West Fargo. Cheyenne is ranked um, is ranked number one. I, there was a big victory over the Patriots, and Demons just throttled 
Cheyenne as I took a look at that score and I thought almost something was wrong. I don't I guess I don't have the dual score in front of me, but, but they just rolled over this yep. the Cheyenne and then and then the Patriots had a tough dual match against them. Well, what's interesting, Century also had faced them earlier in the year. They're one and one with Cheyenne. And in the first duel, Century had all the wrestlers. Out in Fargo, they had a couple things not go their way, but they also then had two two or three guys out for Century. Okay. And so early in the season, Century had a heavyweight, and right now they're kind of adjusting things to fill in that heavyweight spot, which does make a difference. Yeah, and we're in the Shields pregame right now, folks, as Shields offers clothing, footwear, and gear for all your passions from fishing to fashion. Shields is dedicated to offering you the best retail experience, shop sporting goods, Hunting and fishing gear, clothing and more at Shields of Bismarck in Minot. I'm Chuck Claremont alongside uh, John Gums, and um, it's a treat for me to be able to do this. I've been a wrestling fan my whole life, and so to be able to step in here and get a chance to give you some uh, wrestling, especially when you're looking at one versus two right now. And, and so as we look at this, this duel with one versus two, is it as hyped up as we say it is? How are the kids feeling about this? Well, I tell you what, Century has been prepared for this all year. And so, but uh, you never know. They're young men, and they have to step in under the spotlight here and get it done. Century's got an opportunity to, to win this duel. Uh, you could go back to the record books, and Bismarck High's only had probably two seasons in their whole history where they've gotten two or more losses in duels in a season. So this would be huge if Century could find a way to get a win. Yeah, and I was looking at this. I know the Patriots have lost the last, last four duels in a row, and it's probably more than that. I just all I, I have act, activity showing back four years. You may have a better indication when the last time the Patriots beat the Demons. Well, I tell you what, in the whole scheme of things, the Century Patriots have only beat them, I think, six times. So, so that's not many, and three were in the time I was there. And so okay. that goes back to the 80s. So it probably was the early 2000s. It might be a, close to a 15, 20 year. I wish I would have looked up exactly. It's been a long time since the Century Patriots have beat this. Yeah, so I look at this uh, as, I, as last year the uh, Demons beat the Patriots 62 to 13. John, you and I had that one as we were expecting a closer match. And boy, the Demons wrestled really, really well um, in that match. And then in 2021, it was 52 to 23, 19, 20, 45 to 15. And then it was 42 to 20. And ultimately, those are the years you take a look at because some of these kids wrestled um, back into those years. And so the Bismarck High has been, you know, dominant over the period. More importantly, that these kids have been wrestling out in front of us. You're listening, uh, fans. We're in the pregame right now, the Shields pregame show. And uh, we're going to take another break when we come back. Let's see what we got seven. What time are we kicking 15, off? Are we three minutes. They should have the seniors coming out. OK, so we've got the seniors going to be. So we'll take just a, a quick uh, one minute break. When we come back and we'll talk more about each individual team. You're listening to high school wrestling on the PSP network. Work. Back at the Carl Guard Gymnasium, Chuck Claremont and John Gums, and we got Nick Holberg helping me out. I appreciate Nick. And then Scott Woodmancy, you know, one thing that's so, so cool about uh, the group that we have out here is everybody is so helpful. From Nick helping us in the pregame and his and Brandon Beater and the technician side, Woody is not even doing, it wasn't even help, or wasn't even working tonight, and he came out and helped me set up tonight, and Todd Domrys does the same. So it's really cool that we have, uh, we have a great team, and John, you're a great addition to our team on this wrestling side. So as we look at this, um, it's kind of some breaking down some of these individual matches as we look at these two teams, and it, it, there's going to be a lot of really good matches. Is there any one specific match that you think could uh, match up to be uh, – a barn burner. Well, I tell you what, 145 is a very big one right there. Century's got the fifth ranked uh, Braden Morris, who's wrestled really well. He's been ranked as high as three, but he got caught in a couple matches and got beat. And so then you have another person that really stepped up at the beginning of the season. You had Ty Sanders in the spot at 145 and gave a lot of runs. But then you had Dylan Kostelecki, who is a junior and just really, really winning a lot of matches lately. Yeah, my understanding with Ty Sanders, a rotator cuff, most likely won't be wrestling tonight. He got hurt. The match we were doing against Jamestown, um, that, that was early in the year. And, you know, when you're a wrestler and you're, you hurt 
something like a rotator cuff. It's not that any of the muscle is not important, but the push, the pull, there's so many things with that that that's really a tough one to come back on. And um, I was talking to his mom earlier, Sherry Sanders. Actually went to school with Sherry and uh, know his father real well, Pat Sanders. And older brother Jake was a wrestler back in the day. And, oh, yeah. Um, uh, interesting is in his his daughter Carly. So he's got a car. They have a Carly and a tie, and I have a Carly and a tie. So mm, nobody, maybe nobody cares. But I thought that was pretty cool. It's it's a small world. It is a small Bismarck, world. Bismarck. We both know a lot of people in yeah. relationships, but there are probably about three or four really close matches. 106. Uh, Century's actually one seed ahead of the other one, and the, but they're two and one. But Nushma won the last match. So the first two times they faced, you had Iverson win. Another close match. You never know. Is that's at one. That's 106. Okay. 113. I mean, I start five matches that are going to be like down to the wire. 113, Seamus Kukluk is is ranked ahead of Edberg, but Edberg is a pinner. He's he's wild. He, he's a guy that you have to fear a little bit. And that's just match, a freshman, but he's 24 and 9, so and lots of experience. They faced each other throughout their, you could say, all their kid years, they faced each other. So these guys have know each other very well. Other matches really close. You never know what 182, Darian Bits and Tyrus Jenkins. Tyrus Jangle is a returning state placer, but uh, he actually got caught and pinned by Darian Bits early on in the season. So that could be an interesting match. It all depends what happens in those upper weights for Century because that's the only place where they really can do some moving. Yeah, and you look at that. I, you didn't even mention that 195 match. Ole oh. Taylor, number one, a sophomore at 28 and 5. And Bridger Owens, a junior at 23 and 12. He's number three, so one and three. And I, I know Ole's been dominant. Is there, a, is there a big gap between one and three potentially at that weight class? No, because Owens is going to keep it close. Uh, in that situation, it was one that I would have started also because uh, just – the experience there is in the home gym. Owens is going to show up tonight. He's going to try to keep it close and try to catch Ole Taylor. If if I am a coach for Ole Taylor in that situation, I'm going to say you need to pour it on early. Don't be wor worried about mistakes because you're not going to get pinned. You, you, you know you can you can try to throw things. You can try to take your takedowns, but you need to open the gap up so that there can be this wide gap between first and three. First and one and thing, as you fans, you can see out here, they're recognizing uh, seniors on both the girls and the guys side. So as you take a look at that, you can probably hear the announcer in the background as well. We'll just kind of keep moving through this because I think there's just so much to cover. And, you know, what, what, what I like about wrestling, what I don't like as an announcer, what I like about wrestling is there's so many variables. We mentioned it in the girls' side. It's so hard to prepare for for us as broadcasters, but it, as a coach, it's got to be equally as hard to prepare for because there's so many things that can happen throughout a match that's close like this and, and so much strategy involved in it. Well, Schumacher is a master at preparing for duels and moving people around. I watched it through the years. There were years that they were going to lose the duel championship, and it based it basically on a flip of a coin so that they could move somebody and avoid one of their best wrestlers and get a better matchup. They're, they are so good at it. They know what's happening. I was starting to predict in my head. I, I went through this whole duel three, four times over this week. Week. And the best spot for Bismarck High to move things is in those middle to late weight classes. If they can find a way to get a victory, you know, move Tate up maybe at 152 to 160 to face Gums, they can get a win in both those places. And then and then move Araggio, who's nobody's going to touch. And, and he's going to take a win at any weight. So if Araggio goes against Gums, he's going to get a win. But he can also go up to 70 and get a win. So you, you take your little advantages. It looks like they're starting the duel if the clock is right at 132 up there. I, oh, and interesting. I, haven't, okay. I haven't got that official, but it looks like it's 132. That's why they probably put it up there. Yeah. And that, I mean, what, does that make a difference in terms of that they're starting at 132? Yes, because what it does is it's going to leave your young wrestlers to fi finish out the duel. <laughs> and, okay. and, those, and those young matches going 106, 113, 120, 126, and 132, Century's actually favored in all those matches but at 120. And 120, they're dominant with with DeForest. But Century, actually, each one of those matches is favored by one position in the pole. But that doesn't matter in that sense. Because it's if you take a seeded wrestler that's a three and a four, the gap is not big enough. You have to come out and prove to everybody that you are better than that one. We're going to take a quick break as we're just finishing up here. Uh, as we're kind of, we're still in our pregame, but we kind of moved on from that as a Shields pregame right now. And we're going to take a short break as they're announcing the seniors, uh, wrestlers and cheerleaders and everybody else for both these two wrestling programs from Bismarck High. I'm Chuck Claremont alongside John Gums and uh, stay tuned fans in about a minute. Uh, we'll kind of get, come back and we'll get things. Uh, we'll talk a little more. I think there's even some more discussion in terms of some strategy. You're listening to high school wrestling on the PSP network. Right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. 
At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. Whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full-service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment, and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. I'm back at the Carl Gard Gymnasium. Just kind of finish up the seniors. There's lots of them, as you can see, I'm, uh, located out there. As uh, let's talk some more about some of these matchups and 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 what it means. And, and I want to throw the standings up. So I think it's important to see the standings again. So right now, as we show the standings, Wilson and Bismarck have they've secured their way. Now, my not in the paper this morning. It said that they have already secured their way, but there that's are, not necessarily true. There are two scenarios that I came up with where Minot would not make it. Now, Century beat Minot in a duel, but Century faltered to St. Mary's. And so what's interesting here, most of the time, if you look at it, Minot has one tough duel left, so they're going to get a third loss probably to Williston. If, it's tonight, which as is, a matter of fact. Which is also tonight, which is going on. It started at 7, 7.30, so they'll be going here shortly just like us. And it's also in the PSP network. Yep, and so that's on the other side. And so that does make a difference. If Century can find a way to run the table, that's the first scenario where they beat Bismarck High. They still have four duels left. They've got three on Saturday, so they would have to run the table, and then Jamestown would have to win, and then they would, they would it's possible. But so, so they no matter they'd what, have to lose. So no matter what, Wilson and Bismarck are in, and there's a good chance Minot's going to get in too. So what this means from the dual perspective, there's only four teams that make it. There's no West Region tournament in terms of dual tournament. They, those four teams will go right well, out of state. He, here's the way that Century makes the dual. Scenario number two is Century has to beat either Williston or Bismarck High. They had a just a horrendous duel against St. Mary's up in four different matches and got pinned and lost a crucial duel, which basically that they beat... Uh, Minot early in the season really kind of eliminates that that right there completely. But if Century runs the table, it becomes very interesting on how things happen. But we have to start with tonight first. Yeah, and, there's, and there is some, some duels left because I was just trying to pull up. I know I have the somewhere on here I have uh, what's left for well, each of these teams. Maybe you know, John. Yeah, I, I looked at it a little bit. And my, Minot duel there, they also, got, or, they also got Turtle Mountain, which shouldn't be a there problem. And so I, I did look at those a little bit coming up. But the, the, big, the big thing here is just taking care of business tonight for the Century Patriots. If they do not take care of business, it, the road it looks very slim because I tell you what, Williston took care of Bismarck. And Williston is going to be the next toughest duel for, for the Century Patriots come Saturday. So that's a Saturday duel. So usually this is the last duel of the year, but because of the North Dakota weather, we have the Patriots have some more left. And uh, and that's Saturday. So there's there's multiple duels they have Saturday. Well, it was going to be two, but now okay. they missed Dickinson also because Dickinson did not make the duel when the weather came in last week. So you just you have to bring those guys in too. So there'll be three duels on Saturday. It'll be three. a long, long day of duels. So the Patriots are going to wrestle Dickinson. Yes. They're going to wrestle Watford City. And then they'll have Will Williston. But I think the, the the way it goes is first, I think they will wrestle Watford City first, and then they'll have a break, and then they'll face Williston in the middle, and then Dickinson last. So you better have some depth. Well, that's part of it. There's the JVWDA tournament happening that day, too, and they might have to hold a couple guys out from that just in case of injuries. That's the, that's the beauty of this uh, wrestling is there's so many potential changes. There's so many things. It's, oh. Missed it. She went home. Oh no, that's too bad. Well, um, 
we'll have to track something down. We're trying to get a picture with the girls uh, and Sports Clips MVP from Century, and she went home. I'd probably, you know, maybe I can, a little disappointed. I can get it tomorrow at practice. Perfect. You sit sit this with uh, me. I'll, I'll take it over to their practice. I will do that. I'll absolutely do that. As uh, we're winding down here, we're about five minutes before uh, wrestling gets started, and the Demons will come out. The, the, the lights are already down a little bit, but they're going to be down even more as the Demons come in number one. The Patriots are number two. It's getting amped up in here. There's lots of crowd behind us. You can see on the other side uh, if there's uh, plenty of people on that side too, and so this is exciting. It's exciting to be here, and you can just feel the intensity from everybody around. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we will get you set up again for the Bismarck High and Century Duel. You're listening to High School Wrestling on the PSP Network. We look forward to serving you here at your local community bank. At Shots Crossroads, we make eight gallons of homemade ranch dressing every day. So you can smother your dinner salad with it, dip those crispy golden french fries in it, and dunk your breaded chicken strips. You can even cover your... Wait, no, no. You can't put ranch on steak. Or can you? Shots Crossroads. Don't forget the ranch. Just about ready to get started. Is you know, there's it's interesting covering wrestling after doing so many football and basketball games, and that things just don't feel like they're as structured. Maybe they are, <laughs> but it just doesn't feel that way from my perspective. Is well, it? It is. It, it's it's chaotic. Yeah. It's chaos. It is. It's very chaotic. They're bringing up the Bismarck music. Yeah, okay. The ominous something. <laughs> as we're in the Shields pregame, we're going to switch over right now as as a live game's getting ready to go here. Is I'm Chuck Claremont and John Gums. Tonight's wrestling match brought to you by Planet Pizza, Roger Ward Moving and Storage, UPS Store, Jersey Mike's, Presswich Orthodontics, and Northern Plains. Heating and air, and here come the demons. Here's the hoods up as you talk about that. The white hoods run underneath. They do the circling. The fans are getting up behind us, and John, you talked about it, that they'll come off now, and the and Patriots just kind of sit and watch, and and then they'll do the face-offs, and then after it's all over, they'll take the whole team back out to the middle and do what we used to call chain breakers. <laughs> It's a classic. It's a classic. And so, as we talked about elsewhere tonight, Thursday, just one other duel, Wilston at Minot. One thing I'll show you, can show you as we're taking a, a little break here, fans, is this week on here tonight, you can see on here Minot, both girls and boys wrestling. Uh, Minot wrestled Wilson on the PSP Network. Tomorrow we have a basketball game. We're right back here in this gym as Scott Woodmancy and myself will have the Dickinson Midgets, both girls and boys. That should be a good match with both teams really closely matched right there as you get some of the premier guys and Alex Dvorak for uh, Dickens get a chance to see him. Then on Saturday, it'll be girls, boys basketball, excuse me, will be the Patriots and Turtle Mountain. So here comes, we'll take that off and this week and back here as you see live and now we're kind of having guys kind of coming out to the middle as the hand shakes and again, this doesn't necessarily mean anything. They come out, they shake hands, what, he's throwing stuff. You better watch so you don't get hit in the face with a t-shirt or something. Oh, hey, we'll take a free t-shirt, right? <laughs> they better have a big one, I can tell yeah. you that they're throwing it at me. <laughs> and so these guys are coming out and you call these the face-offs. Well, we, wa we watched it last week, yes, these are the face-offs and, and basically it's a handshake tradition for wrestling. Now, like we said before, these are the majority of the time the matchup you'll see, but coaches will move some. And you're you're feeling that that's going to most likely happen. There's going to be some some not I wouldn't call it gamesmanship, but coaching going on because uh, there, we when we look at our score sheet, I mean there's two and three wrestlers potentially in almost every weight class that's out here. Well, I tell you what, they hide their secrets well. I mean, I I sent emails to coaches and asking them, you know, you know, what kind of outlook can you look? And they are mama. 
because they don't want to give up any secrets because it's that close some of these duels that one little move can be a fluctuation of 12 points in a duel giving away six and taking six and that 12 points in a duel is huge sometimes you don't see these victories where somebody beats somebody by 20 in a duel that could be just two matches that shift or, you know, sometimes you see a match like Jamestown and Century, it was a 31-30. All it was was one match change, which changes that duel. So it's it's not it's not like a layup that you miss in basketball if you miss one. They have more opportunities. In a match here, when you, when you get pinned or, or you give up a match you're supposed to win, it's like uh, you think of the football game when someone pushed them some out of bounds and gave the other team a victory in this last weekend. You know, it was, it was that big. Yeah, and so unfortunately, we had, with all the activity going on, we got our score hub bumped. And so we'll see if we can get this back on. That's going to be not going to be easy, well, I can tell you that right now. Well, I tell you what, we'll be very, very good at giving the score out there. If we can't give it up on, on the, the screen, we'll do our best. Yeah, I'll call out there. But we have, let's as you take can a, see. Let's take a short 30-second break. When we come back, we'll get started. There's still 30 seconds before we yeah. got going, correct? We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, we'll see if get you set up for the matchup. We look forward to serving you here at your local community bank. All right, we've got some technical difficulties. We've got all kinds of kids running around here. We've got to be careful. I know, I know, please. It's <laughs> as their coin flip out, which is really important. Yeah, as we had 50, 60 little kids running out for trying to get a T-shirt. You don't want to look. take somebody out. <laughs> <laughs> they walked by and bumped our, um, our score. Yeah, so, so it looks like the demons look like they won the, the flip. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, you keep talking, John. So they were pretty jacked up after they won the flip. That leaves, leaves them that their game plan, if they need to move somebody, that allows them to do it at a certain weight. And I'm not sure, you know, what they took. Odds or evens, they did go over. We're not on the same side as the score table, but it looks like that the demons are odds. It looks like they're gonna come out on the mat here first, but they also then get the choice. Coming out at 132, you got a big match. Got Brody Furter needs to set the tables for Bismarck Center if he's gonna do it. He, he has wrestled Mertens before here. And he did tech fall him last time he wrestled him. So we got Grady, Grady no, let's see, we're starting at 132. So we got Brody Furter, a senior at 21 and 10. He's number six in the state and Logan Mertens. Oh, Mertens with a sweep single here, a little drag. Brody Furter with a nice little sprawl, trying to grab that ankle. But I tell you what, now these two have faced a couple different times. Now Furter needs needs to get Century off on the right page. They're definitely favored in this match. Furter's been ranked as high as three. He's sitting at number five or six right now in most polls. And so right now he's got a little belly wizard, needs to fight it off. Referee tonight, Randy Piotz. Got a lot of experience, ready to handle any grief that's given to him by any. There's a s single back by Furter. A good job by Logan Mertens staying, keeping away from that takedown. On the edge of the mat. He's doing a good job, catch the other hand. Oh, Felder's butt, oh, almost. 
Randy Piat's a state champ way back in the day. I, I, what was it, 126 or something crazy yeah, like that? Yeah, you almost you about <laughs> double that now. For Easy most now. Of us. Hey, 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 but, hey. I, I played <laughs> a lot of kidding. softball with Randy over I the years. I know, he's a great Baseball. guy. Baseball. Yeah. Um, you know, Randy was a cradler, and uh, he's one of these guys. He's been around the sport enough. You know, he knows everybody. I think, you know, if they have a Hall of Fame position for referees, he'll be there for someday for that, too. Still trying to get that single leg takedown, but just great job of sprawling There's on the top. first points. There he flipped around, so Ferder, Brody Furter with two points Furter takedown. Furter can be dangerous on top. 33 seconds left in the first period as Furter leads 2-0. Just the first match starting at 132. You know, in a situation like this, you know, Mertens, his job is to get out there and, and of course, not get pinned, but he needs to make this a competitive match. Last time, Furter really took it to him, and it was a takedown machine. Had about two or three takedowns in the first period, and then started doing a lot of turns, and kind of like this, he's got him deep in the cradle. Short time, can he get back points? Just a couple seconds left. That's six seconds left, he's got, he's got time, he's back. gonna get him. I don't think he's gonna get a pin, he does not. So he will get back Gets points, two. he's gonna give him two. So two back yeah. points, a good job of, by Furter getting Mertens in that cradle. Yeah, that's a good good deal there. You, you know, not looking back at the clock or anything like that. You wrestle till the till the whistle blows. We say 4-0. Furter leads. First match yep. in this duel at 132. Furter with a quick stand up. Does good job hand control. Now coming back, gonna go hard cross face. Push Merton, that head down as Merton drops down to the leg. You know, defense if somebody stands up, one of the best defenses for the first time or something, a referee will call a stalemate is going back to the leg. But if you do it over and over again, you will get called for a stalling. Furter's got a chance to throw a hard cross face in here and maybe get his leg out to get one. Or even get a reversal here. There's a two-point reversal for Furter. That makes it 6-0 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Well, it's, he's got this cross face cradle working again. He's got it locked up. Now, in a situation like this, he's putting a lot of pressure back into the hip, and Merton's trying to push back into him because you don't want to fall that far hit. Try to basically hook the far leg. There he's just got like it. he's doing there. Trying to catch Furter to pin himself. Still trying to bail out. Now he's got a hold of that leg. He's going to get a reversal. Good job right there. Near fall. So he got back points first. So two point near fall. That makes it eight to zero, but a two point reversal by Mertens makes it eight to two now. Well, a little defense on that cradle. Got back and hooked, hooked to the far leg and actually had him in what's called a defensive pin position. Actually, could have been kind of. Furter is going to put some on his back, but the other guy puts him back toward his. And a guy can actually pin himself. It's one of the weirdest things in wrestling that happens. So Furter trying to get that escape. 34 seconds left as our clock is now up, back Ooh. up. Century coaches, there we go. Definitely. Thanks to Brandon Beater, man. I thanks. To, uh, I loved our technicians and love this quick assist up in Mana. Takes care of us. Eight to two right now in the BNC National Bank scoreboard as Brody Furter, number six in the state, leading Logan Mertens, just a sophomore. Well, the Furter, a senior. The, co the coaches said they wanted more time back on the clock. I think they put some more down there. The clock was still running when they went out of bounds, so. Okay. Now, the coaches are very adamant that Furter's got to get out here to score in this period. He's up by six. Bonus points, you know, I, was, I would hope in a situation like this, in a duel, that bonus points will make a difference in this duel. Getting pins, you know, tech falls, major decisions. There, Furter. That's an escape. Up by seven. You know, 9-2. Last time since he tech falled him, you know, Furter, you know, they want bonus points out of him. So he got seven seconds to stay out of that takedown. Merton's doing a good job trying to get him himself in a tough throwing situation. Could not do it. So we're going to finish this second period. It's going to be nine to two. Brody Furter will lead Logan Mertens. Bismarck's choice here. Talk us through the points now. Team points. You mentioned that is is a difference between winning by uh, yeah eight points is a major decision. And with a major decision, you get four. And then get if you get a, a tech fall, you get five. That's winning by 15. That's 15. Yep. There we go. Furter's got a chance to get this takedown. Lice his cover. Got Mertens in trouble to catch a wrist. So two point takedown now. He needs to keep pouring it on. He's so 11 to two. Try a little bit different turn combination, a little power half. 140 back, left in this match. Go back. He's got a great cradle, but he's just got to watch it. So, you know, he's got to bump the hip over. There he's got, got it right tied there. up again. There's that cradle again, and he can get a pin here. He's got it tight. He's got that bottom wrist trying to trap the far leg. He's definitely there. It is. 
He's, it is there. Our side is, it's a loose situation. Oh, well, Randy Piazza is right there. So Woo. Randy knows, but it's going to wow. be three more points. That takes it 14 to 12. Not that I'm against refs, but they don't always know. No, <laughs> <laughs> no Randy can see he had the best position for it. I'm, as a fan, it's tough to say he didn't have it, you know. But here he goes. No, they want further. He's, he's up by 12. Now the, the question is, this is where we talked before. The technical fall is going to get you five. What do they want to do? Is it, hey, we don't want to get the technical fall? I mean, because ultimately, well, if you get back points and you get to 17, it's over. Well, here's here's the whole thing. Yes, if you get up by, by 15. So if he gets his points to 17, so if you can get him on his back, you are definitely looking for the fall. Yeah, but, but you know, you try to keep him there for the rest of the period. Bismarck High does not want to give up any back points. Right now he's got his head on the mat. He's just defensive. That should be right now. Randy should be throwing up that stall call instead of him just laying there and playing defense. And part of it is such a great job by Furter on top, riding his leg trapped inside. And he's going hard on this so he can try to catch it. And the coaches are going, don't give it up. Fight, fight, fight. He's doing everything possible. Sales 20 seconds. Yep, there's that Warren. It probably should have been more than one of those. But he's got 17 seconds to try to turn him over. Further, he can go back to his cross face. At this point, it's there in a major decision. It'd be four points for the Patriots. Yep, short time here. Mertens did his job by not getting tech fouled. Not pinned. Why? Another 30 seconds and may not have been a different, it may have been a different thing, but Brody Furter, he comes out victorious as he will win 14 to two. That'll give the Patriots four, four points. So four to zero after the first one, we'll move into the 138 pound weight class as we'll get some, pay some bills too. Tonight's match brought to you by the UPS store as this thing gets going right away. They don't mess around as we're in the 138 is Caden Nakoto. And boy, right now, the, I didn't see who they, who was for the demons, who's wrestling for the demons. So it's like Devin Halverson. So Devin Halverson, a junior at 20 and three, he's got Dakota taken down and Dakota's ranked number two in the state. It's gonna be a two point near fall plus two back points. So it's, well, they got that one day wrong, wasn't it? Isn't it? It should be 4-0 Bismarck High. Yes, it is. Okay. So now Dakota. E even surprised. But I tell you what, this Halverson's dangerous. And like I said, you are in the Bismarck High gym. Never underestimate what these guys are willing to do and do here. So it's a two-point reversal. It should be. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it's, they have a dim Bismarck High 5-2 to down below. Oh, it's my bad. So they called it. They must have gave him three points for the. I thought he just gave him two, two for the. I thought the so, too. Fall too. Maybe we missed a finger. Yep. It should be 4 2. Yeah, they're talking back points. Yeah, I think you, uh, that's how we showed they showed him initially. So Randy Piazza is walking over, talking to the officials, taking a look at the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Uh, BNC National Bank with locations throughout North Dakota, Minnesota, and Arizona. BNC National Bank provides you with banking and health man wealth management services for your business and family. Visit BNC Bank online today. So they changed it. Four to two right now. Dakota Lee's a little rollout and a reversal. They got a reversal yet? Nope. They they called one point. So Halverson gets. Well, one this point. is McMahon. This is not Halverson. I just heard this is Landon. This is Landon McMahon. Who's That's a my fault. Yes. He's at 23 and nine. They don't have numbers on their back no. like, like other sports. Yeah, basketball you can start picking it out. But <laughs> I, I tell you what, sorry about that. That isn't Halverson. So if they start. Here they could move Helverson up to the next weight class. That might be where their, their change is already here. So one point for an escape there. So it's five to two right now with 39 seconds left in this first period. It's been a lot of activity going on. Here is oh inside leg grab, dropped him down. Boy, I'm impressed with this Mc, this McMahon. Wow, well, I tell you what, he comes out firing here tonight. And big thing here is Dakota's got to stay within it. He's he is a turning machine. He doesn't usually panic. So now you can get this escape. Now you can toss him right here. So seven to three now with that escape. And so he's got, he's got to pick up the pace. I can hear his dad yelling, pick up the pace. Get in there, score. So it looks like this is going to have to be a high scoring match. Well, this is this is a big one right here. You can see the, the demon faithful are, they are jacked for this one right now. McMahon, the junior at 23 and nine. He comes out and a seven to three. He leads after one period. Dakota ranked second. And returning state champion. And returning state champion, thank you. <laughs> like I said, he's got to be ready to wrestle. I'm not sure if he was ready because you noticed how McMahon came out. 
He's got to take a deep breath and compose himself. He can score and score a lot of points quick. There's that drag. I know you talked about Dakota. He's so good at when he's on the ground, when he's riding, gets so many different moves. He's got a, oh, almost another takedown with the single leg, and good job by Dakota going down. He's got to yep. bring him in. Been, but it should have been two. He was on his hip when he had both legs. And it's just going to keep driving, trying to get that There's in between. He gave him two. Now it's already 7 5. Dakota can throw a leg in. We'll see what happens here. McBannon, he's got that leg he can step tied up, up, and they're on the edge of the mat. So, and he's lots of time in the second hard. period. He's trying to get a reversal, actually. 118 left in the second period. 7 5. McMahon leads Dakota. And he still has control of that leg. They're on the edge of the mat. Randy Piaz is letting him wrestle. They're out of bounds. Yeah, at what down. point is there a stalemate at that? Just a lot of activity Ooh. going on there. Yeah, you can't call a stalemate there because there was a lot of movement. And, he, and McMahon has to be given a chance because it looked like he was in position to maybe score. Dakota's holding it out, so he wouldn't. But So this is the spot Caden likes to be on. Yes, he is He is a top machine. So they, they've definitely been working this, this short sit stand-up basically to, to make sure he doesn't throw his legs in. Dakota then, you know, catches his bottom wrist. A lot of finger peeling. And so Dakota is only down two here. He is a turning machine, but, you know, he can't wait. He's trying to get what's called a Spencer Lee tilt, and he's really close. He's got him in his... In his oh, he almost had him pinned. That's a defensive pin again that they were looking for, and the fans were, oh, man, you heard him behind us screaming. It looked for a second like he had both, both yeah. shoulder blades on the mat. And it's got to be two seconds. And, okay. Ran, and Randy was there in, in position. So, so he's trying to get a tilt to get yep. some points. He and can't quite get yep, him. You, you got to get him past the 45. So when you look at angles, 90 degrees is not enough. And you see where. And the Dakota got stunned. So he's trying to catch his breath a little bit here on top two so he can have a tough last, you know, two minutes of this match. Seven, five, ten seconds trying left. Trying to get this tilt. This. He, there it is. He can get some points. One. Two, he's got tilt, so it's going to be tied up here. He should now have two. He's up, he should get two, yeah. So that is it. So two point near fall. So that'll make it seven to seven. That second period was all Caden Dakota. He had four points there as he trailed seven to three. So Dakota will take, he will take bottom. And he's breathing hard, but I tell you what, he's, he's composed himself. He's back in this. McMahon right now is going to ride him for a bit. He's, you know, he's, he's known to throw his own legs in. Use a power half type situation. Dakota's kind of just stealing out here. But Randy Piance won't let this sit there for a little, very long either. He'll call a stalemate or he's going to call a stall. And he always turned, got him to his back. Oh, no. So that oh, was a almost a oh. call of reversal on that one yet. No, 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 re yet. no reversal yet because he, he spun back out. Dakota, if he, he could have got his legs out. Who's going to be stronger? They're tied up there. That's got to be an uh, escape now, right? Yep. One point escape for Caden Dakota. He leads eight to seven on the BNC Bank scoreboard. 123 left in this great match. Second overall as the Patriots lead four to zero after the first match. Well, this is, this is a test here now for both of these guys because right now Dakota is very favored, and this would be a huge disaster situation. If, if Century would lose this match in this duel, this is one that would be, you know, one of those we talk about a shift in points. He's got that leg oh. pulled in, but and he's, Dakota's he's got it just locked. a tremendous job. He's got him in the cradle back now. points, yep. He, and there, he could get him pinned here if he, if he just does a little flip of the hip here. So and he's just, giving him two back yep. points, I don't know, or two takedowns. Yep. So Dakota is up by three, but yet he has a chance. If he can pull this tight to him, he's still got 45 seconds. He can walk that leg up. 10-7, Dakota leads. But Century in this situation wants the victory first, but I think really expected to get bonus points in this match. Dakota's going to be on top now, where he has just been dominant this match on top. In a situation like this, McMahon, and, you know, he's got nothing to lose. He's going to try to catch him in something, a quick roll, a stand-up, a reach back, kind of what's called a chin rip or something. McMahon trying to get that stability first. Yep, it's called it. What's interesting is this is not a stand-up that we ever taught in the past. It's a little tripod stand-up. They stay wide. It's kind of a new little technique to see if the top guy's going to get high. Caden just does such a good job getting his legs locked in there. And he's going to start doing pressure, and what he can do is push that head right underneath his armpit and see if he can get back points. It's so really close. 15 to 11 seconds and now, now in this needs, match. And if they want the victory here, they're going to sit there and not get a stalemate, but, they, but he's going for the back points, trying to get him over. Good match for there. Great match. Did not give him any, so 10 to 7. Quality match right there. Three more points for the Patriots.
That makes it seven to zero. Century, Le Century is ahead right now in the BNC National Bank scoreboard. We'll move on to the next match as we got Braden Morris, the freshman from yes. the Patriots, ranked number five at 24 and nine. He'll take on Dylan Kostelecki. Yes, they are bumping the junior up. at 25 and nine. So Kostelecki jumping up to wrestle. Now Kostelecki is a wild man. So Bismarck has to show their hand early and they're bumping everybody up. So if you got Kostelecki here, they, they're gonna have somebody else wrestle 52 and they're probably you know, I'm guessing Tate Olson will not wrestle 52. They probably have somebody in the in the weight, and then move Tate Olson probably up to 160 and move LJ up to 170. So they they definitely had to show their hand early. Morris is is a bigger wrestler, but these two have, guys have wrestled a long time too through the freestyle program. Morris, so they, a freshman, Costalecki a junior. They know each other a lot. Yes. And so, hoofta. The pace of that last one was kind of crazy. It's got my nerves going. <laughs> Very dangerous. Nice little drag. Drag and got in, grab the inside of that leg, pulling him back on the mat. They were out of bounds. Good got job by Costalecki getting them back in the mat and got a takedown. Dumped that, dumped that single. Two points, 57 seconds left in this first period. Costalecki leads Morris. And Kostelek, he's given up just a little bit of weight here, a whole weight class up, but Bismarck prepares their wrestlers to not fear, you know, a weight difference between the guys. It's matchups. You know, Styles, Morris standing up right away on bottom. Morris is dangerous, can throw. That's why Kostelek, he's pushing off. But he had such a nice little sweep single there and finished that single. Oh, pummels back in, high crotch. Ooh. He's in deep. Pulling him in, got to be good behind him. Got to get those legs on the inside. Two point Gives takedown, them. four to one now on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Kostelecki over Morris. 10 seconds left in this first period. Short time here. And that'll be, what do they call there? It's just out of bounds. Oh, out of bounds, okay. So two seconds left, but most likely this is gonna end at two zero, or and blood four time. to one, I'm sorry. We got some blood time. While we're in some blood time, Let's pay some bills as <laughs> Roger Ward Moving and Storage has been proudly helping the region with their moving and storage needs since 1942. Find them online at rogerwardmovingandstorage.com to schedule a move or to find a quote, Roger Ward Moving and Storage, as well as Press Switch Orthodontics, specializing in braces and Invisalign for all ages. We offer free consultations and financing options that make it easy to take your smile to the next level. Call 852-2646 or visit MinotBraces.com today to get started with a free virtual consultation, Prestwick, Prestwich Orthodontics. And here we go as the blood is stopped. Two seconds. Two seconds quick. and did not get an escape. So that'll end the first period with Kostelecki leading four to one. Kostelecki's choice, defers. So he defers. I'm Morris. getting, you know, I, I'm getting uh, figured out how to keep these these score sheets even. Yeah, that's good. I tell you what, <laughs> it's a battle to do score sheets while you're commentating. It, it is, trust me. Uh, <laughs> some people are good at it. I, I'm too busy thinking <laughs> instead of writing. That's all right. Many that's... times I look down and go, oh, yeah, I forgot that whole period. We pay you to get, <laughs> get locked in and talk about what's happening. <laughs> well, in a situation like this now, everybody, you know, starts wondering now, how does somebody get back into a match? Right here, it's just about movement, being aggressive. Uh, Dakota found a way to come back after he was way down. Like I said, Kostelek, he's a wild man. He's, so who's he's favored dangerous. in this one? I think right now Morris is number five, so wouldn't he be technically favored in well, this match? In my in my poll, Kostelek is five on the previous way below it. So you've got two five seeds. Okay. And so these guys are very evenly matched. Kostelek, the only thing he's given up is weight. He's escaped by Morris, four to two now. Kostelecki leads Morris, 112 left in the second period. I tell you, Kostelecki's flowed real well. You know, this the idea of, oh, there's a great move. He's got to get two hands to it. And he's trying to pull out of bounds. Oh. So that's a good defensive move if you're out of bounds mm. to try to spin around. You know, it's controversial because sometimes they will call them for fleeing the mat. He did go in a circle as he's going and not just kind of kick and try to run out. You know, so some people might complain. Both these guys got great sweep single shots. But Kostelecki early, like there's that sweep single again. Well, he's, he's got it in tight, got that leg and that's, that's, wrapped around too. That's a flow of the match. 
Now he's got to do what's called an ankle wizard to hold his arm in there so he can't come around. Now he's, he's actually come all the way over and he got the takedown. Point takedown, six to two now on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Kostelecki leads Braden Morris. Well, he's caught Morris on a couple of sweep singles and, and, and dumped him on it. So, and a high crotch, just what I call chain wrestling, going one move to the next. And Morris right now has got his head on the mat. He's got to get going. He looks kind of tired, and I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if it's it's tired, but probably frustrated. Like, okay. what the heck? It, he just had a single on the other side of the mat and then was not quite prepared for one to come back at him. Kostelik, you got to give him credit, you know, for coming back and getting that sweep single right away after the restart. Trying to run a deep half there. End of the second period. Six to two, two point takedown and, and a, for Kostelecki and Morris had an escape in that period. So that both wrestlers, or excuse me, Kostelecki deferred, so he chose up. While they're on their feet here in the third, Morris has to stay low. This, I, he's, he's standing way too high. Oh man, what a great quick move. A drag into the, into the low shot coming around. Oh, he's got a chance to score coming back behind it. Oh, oh what a good Re defensive move by Braden Morris. Recovered. Now Morris has got a nice little tilt series if he can catch that armor underneath, which he's doing. It's bottom wrist, tilt. And so he's trying to catch it. Dylan, if you reach, you know, it's hard angle for our camera to see, but Dylan was reaching underneath to get his other arm peeled off. 6-4 right now. Kostelecki leads Morris. And now he's caught Morris's hand. Morris has got to go back to that, that bottom wrist. And he's got a bottom wrist tilt. He's got a chop and catch. See how he's got it? And then he pulls it back over the head. That's a good job by Morris. But I meant by Kostelecki on bottom. It's trying to get to his base. Oh, time evaporates here as this match goes. 110 left in this period. 6-4. So he's still got enough time to try to get a turn here. He's got that bottom wrist and maybe he can work a chicken wing. Kostelecki, the coaches are yelling, get up. He's still working hard. Kostelecki is down below, so but no stalling. Well, I tell you what, he's on his belly. Piazza's looking close about calling for stalling. He's yep. trying to rip his, arm, his hands apart. Can't give a stalling. Yep. But so. that... Like he said, he's got this chicken wing and he's got to run it to try to get back points. Morris has got a chance to turn him over if he can just get that shoulder down. Kostelecki using his head for leverage into the mat. Oh, and 36 seconds. Morris, Morris is trying. Oh, I tell you what. He's got to get off to the side and drive it. He's got so close to get two points. He's got about, oh, 25, still short time. He's got to keep it straight across the back. Now Kostelecki gets his shoulder down. 20 seconds left to hold this one out. And see if, if at some point a stall, Piaz calls a stall. And a stalling, a stalling's not going to be enough. He needs to get a turn or it's just not going to happen. A tilt, anything there. Nine seconds. Oh, he's almost, oh, not quite. He needed two seconds. He got almost one. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one. And what a match. Yeah, hold on to your. Yeah, got to hold on to our <laughs> stuff here. What a match right, right there. Technology here. Final score, yeah. six to four. So that'll be two points for the Demons. Three points for the Demons. I'm sorry, three, so seven to three. Right now, the Patriots lead. What a great match there, as we will now move up into the 152 weight class. We've got- Oh, Tate Olson coming out. Tate Olson, number one ranked, or number number two ranked State Olson in the state at 24 and one. He's a senior. And, and Riley Stair, a junior at six and 12. Oh man, Tate Olson would have a record that'd be unbelievable this year. But he uh, hurt an ankle and he's just kind of pretty much the last two, three weeks getting back into it. Riley Stair, oh, he's been fighting all season. He's, he's you know, came back after a year off and kind of filling it at that 152. But Tate Olson's his only loss is to a kid from out of state. So he is prime to be right in the mix of being in a state finals. Another demon to make a finals. You know? <laughs> and he's good. He's fast. I've been watching him grow, you know, through the Matt Pat program. He's and he's single leg pulled in, but just off the mat. He can be dominant. He'd be a guy that I would love to see in a, in a college program, but I'm not sure. Just a quick snatch, single, just basically reach down, grab an ankle, a little ankle pick. Two take down for two point takedown for Olsen over Riley Stair. 113 left in this first period. If you just joined us, the Patriots has been three matches. It's seven to three. Patriots won the first two. Bismarck High and, and Dylan Kostelecki won the last one. And so it's going to be, you know, differential in some of these matches. Now the, the gap between Riley Stair and you know, Tate Olsen is huge. So they're demons want a pin here. They want a, a six-point fall. Y yes, nothing but. 
And Anything it, less than that would be there, a, a victory in your mind for Riley Stair. That is so much. Yes, he needs to try to stay in this match <laughs> no matter what. He's got to be double jointed. He's got to <laughs> do almost anything not to stay in his back. He needs to fight. He, his caliber, like right now, Tate Olson can drive this chicken wing over and he's in trouble. We just walked it over. And he only got 27, 26 seconds. He, oh, he slid it back out. Oh, almost a reversal. Got one, two points. There we go. There. And has not called anything yet. Olsen still holding on. No escape, but what a good job under on the bottom by Riley Stair, turning something could be devastating into potential opportunity. Good. And the and the Bismarck coaches are staying pretty calm over there. Olsen uh, recovered but on I, that one. That was close. I would guarantee if it gets to the third period, these Bismarck coaches will be out of their chairs and at the edge of the mat going, we need this. So four to zero. Hey, no, we didn't even talk about the coaches. Jeff Schumacher and Mark Lardy, co-coaches for the Demons. Gerald Lamar and Nathan, Nathan Human for the Patriots. Got some state champs there. I know Nathan Human won a state championship as did Jeff Schumacher. Yep. Nate's first year as a solo head coach, long time with Lamar. And and so he I'm is sorry, Gerald Lamar, yeah. Yep, that, he's, was, that was last year. Yep, last year. And yeah, you know, there's always, you know, I want to say growing pains as a brand new coach, but man, he's a workaholic. He loves the sport. Every morning, you know, a five to six o'clock start for some of these guys that want to get some time in the war in the room. I'm impressed of how he's gonna be. And he's he's building a culture. Oh, and Tate Olson, like he said, so tough. Stair doing a good job. He <laughs> really off truly his is. Back. Using but that leverage. And like I said, he, this looked like a double jointed situation. Got to keep it straight. Oh. Pushing that arm down. That chicken wing. This is where he got almost too high before. This is, this is what he did. He, he didn't trap the arm last time. And Stair tries to hop out of there, trying to get his arm free. Can he get his arm out of there? He's got to clear his arm. And it's a bad angle for the camera. And, you got and a full minute and for going on right and here. And for the commentator, Gums, I'm in trouble not seeing this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, he's almost rolled through. He's got to keep fighting short time, or not, not short time, got a whole minute. But Olsen doing a good job keeping all the way inside the mat. And there is the pin. Three minutes and 10 seconds. 3-10 for Tate Olsen. Valent effort by Riley Stair, but he could not withstand the number two wrestler in the state of North Dakota, Tate Olsen. That'll take the match. Six points there for Tate Olson, it gives the Demons their first lead on the BNC National Bank scoreboard at 9-7. to seven. We'll move up into the 160-pound weight class. Pound for pound, the toughest wrestler in the state right here. L.J. Araggio. Araggio, 33-0, ranked number one against Jax Gums. Right away, we got a takedown yeah. for... I would, I would cry because it is my son, but, but I know the difference in this match. My son is ranked, and he, he gets... No, it looks silly. Jax ranks is ranked number five. Araggio's Arujo is number one, and he's been dominant. Two state champions already, and just a junior. The best, the best thing my son has going for him. He's kind of double jointed and very you limber. You see that right but, now. But LJ is not going to be afraid to rip his head off if he needs to. <laughs> so you can tell, he wants the pin for the team, and he watch that arm. Ooh, I want to. Jax, oh. Jax can switch around. Come out. Watch that arm on the other side. Jax doing a good job trying to get a reversal, but. There's nothing there. Good activity right there for Gums. Couldn't do it. Gave him three back points. So right now it's five. And, and I'm hoping Randy understands that there's a difference in this and the physical. Not enough of the match. Keeps LJ. He does rip some people's faces off every once in a while. And I know that. My boy knows that coming in. <laughs> he's had some amazing victories this year. Uh, at his 30, he was 33 and 0 last year. This year he's already 33 and 0. But he has just been, and he has been hiding from nobody. No. He's not afraid to face anybody. He is looking to go at big time college next year. We'll see what he does. He will wrestle in the off season. He's one of these 24 seven wrestlers. You know, Jax is a senior here. Well, he's, he plays football though. Well, he played football this year. He, and you talked to Coach I, Gibson, he said he's one of my best tacklers. Yeah, and that came second half of the season. I did a long talk with his dad and his dad goes, just make it one more week. And then he goes, are you gonna, his dad finally asked him because he wasn't getting playing time early in the season. Was, uh, are you gonna get some playing time? And he goes, LJ kept saying, one more week, one more week. And finally he got to play a little bit. Next thing you know, about halfway through the season, he's starting, he, he's starting and doing everything. And, doing he, and, he, uh, and he hadn't played football. And you he know, had a blast with it. It's the, it's the wrestling attitude, though, going out. Gum's doing a pretty good job. You know, not getting pinned here. I'm, I'm afraid I might say fall sometime during this match. <laughs> so 5-0. 
Ararujo leads Jack's Gums. Gums number five, Ararujo number one. But th there's such a separation. He's, he's a D1 caliber wrestler. And Jax needs to take him back to the mat, and he needs to show that, guess what, I'm here to wrestle. I'm not, not here to take anything from a demon wrestler. So, so, so is that a reversal to even give him an escape? You give him a reversal, not an escape. So two-point reversal, 7-0 right now. And like I said, Ruggio will take that and run this hard. Watch this, dangerously flips him. Oh, cranking him over. Jax fighting hard, get that arm through. Raju's, again, he just doesn't take traps this, the legs does everything he can he doesn't take this lightly that somebody's trying to fight and not get pinned so he's going to go hard jack scums is holding his way up here very hard 245 of this match out of Rougeau gets the victory the demons move up to 15 to 7. Hoofta. All right, Dad, you can take a deep breath. That's okay. You can move I, on. I've been, battled. I've been around long enough that I know what happens. The only matches I get excited for and when he goes out are the matches where it's going to be close. You know? Yeah. You know, I, my nerves weren't even going. I, I pretty much <laughs> knew what's happening there. So we stopped here to 170, and we have who's wrestling. I couldn't see him announce it for This is Jer Century. Jairus Burkhart. Well, he is stuck together. Holy cow. Fresh. He's 17 and sick. He's what? Freshman. No, he's not. Yes. He you don't is. get built like that as a freshman. Well, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know I didn't. But I tell you what, he is a weight lifting machine and he goes with Ole Taylor the, the sophomore and these guys go almost every morning to to lift and so and we got James he, he, Nagel for the demons he's a junior at 11 and 14 so you're giving the nod right now to Jarris Burkhart right uh, now if you take well, a look at well Jarris's record 17 and 6 is is his record but i would say Three-fourths of those are against JV wrestlers. Okay. He did make the finals of what's called the Rumble the Red JV tournament, which is no slouch. That's yep. the wrestling varsity wrestlers from a lot of schools. So, honestly, he hasn't had a chance to wrestle much varsity because of Cole Redens being the varsity guy. And the reason they're putting him out here is because they're trying to f make Bismarck fear at 182 that he'd jump up and, and wrestle there because he did wrestle way in at 170. And then that's what they think Bismarck... That, the Bismarck demons are all of a sudden they're going back talking to the wrestlers going, okay... Maybe he's going to wrestle there. But uh, for the fans out there who can't call Bismarck High, I'll give you the little key here. Redenz is still uh, basically nursing a little bit of sickness. Not sure what it was, but he had a little glucose issue. And they're trying to get him ready if he can wrestle for reasons. Because that's a big state. match. I mean, Redenz, 19-9, uh, and nine, number four ranked rank wrestler. And he had a big victory earlier in Minot against a wrestler ranked well, ahead of him. Redenz has pinned this, this wrestler before. So this is kind of one of those hiccups that Bismarck yep. Century has to take because they know Redenz is not ready physically and would hate, help, hate for him to get hurt in a situation like yeah, this. Yeah, that's a smart move by the coach is these and, two guys just going at it. <laughs> and I tell you what, Burkhardt here wrestles. I, You know, it's it's probably not the, right, not the right metaphor, but he wrestles like he's on steroids where he's got these, you know, aggressive moves where, you know, what do you call it, raid roid? Yeah, yeah. Ro roid rage. <laughs> so he's a little brother of but, Jacob Burkhardt. But he is not going to be a littler brother. I tell you what, he is strong. I've been impressed. He just has to get, you know, his motor going. When he starts scoring, he's going to be a great wrestler and a great football player for Century. He's one that got to sit a lot of sidelines as a freshman. Imagine that on a team with about 100 guys for the Century Patriots. Yeah, so and, we, have, sorry, we have some blood time. Yes. And so as we take a break here, as we'll have an intermission. Uh, this isn't an intermission, but we're going to give some love to the premier chiropractic, Dr. Kirk Mason, Dr. Cody Haugen, Dr. Becky Perry Domries can be found at premierchiropracticnd.com. Focus on improving the health of the Minot and surrounding areas through the most cutting edge advances in natural health care today. They're way put up some blood on the floor. And uh, Serve Pro tonight, there's been all kinds of takedowns. We give them our Serve Pro takedowns. None in this match yet, though, as we got 0 0 24 7 emergency service, trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water, cleanup and restoration. It's Serve Pro. So you got to remind me when we get a takedown, we're going to call it a Serve Pro takedown. <laughs> No, that, that, there'll be a few more before we're done that here today. Aver, that advertising bit, I don't still get. So I, <laughs> me being a color guy is about right. There you go. There you go. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I'm usually a color guy I, in most instances. I usually say I didn't learn until about to read until about fifth grade. <laughs> oh, oh no, geez. that's not. I know. It's, <laughs> we know better than that. As you're a oh, teacher real, over at oh, Mandan. Oh, good shot by Burkhart. Can he score? Oh, he just Aggressive. picks him up and because he is super strong. Oh, almost. Boy, he couldn't quite do a good job. Well, of, I tell you what, if Burkhart can find a way to get a win here, you know, this is should, should be a close battle. Burkhart's on the edge now. In Class A wrestling, if you guys don't know this, they get to take three extra guys to the region. And he's one of those in consideration for Century to try to qualify for state. So you get to pick any weight class. Can it be just two per weight class or you two max in a weight class? Okay. But if you have a backup that can't make the team and a stud, it's a great opportunity. In Class A, they get to do this. And it also allows for some guys that might not be able to cut weight or, you know, change weight classes. It allows them still an opportunity to make it through the whole season and wrestle. Burkhart's got this front head. Can he score? You snap him down one more time. Going a little deep on this front head. There we go. Like I said, well, Century needs to somehow to find a way to get this nice heart double stalling by Bismarck High. Just feels like Nagel just afraid of the strength right now of, of uh, Burkhard. Now he's got blood again. Yes. As and Burkhard here, just... I mean, a bully, in a, not in a bad way, in a good way. And then yes. he just, hey, he knows he's physical. Use the strengths you have. Part of the freshman thing is when you watch both his doubles, he did take nice, hard, aggressive doubles, but his head was between the legs. And so you can finish those, but that's not ideal. You got to get her to the side. Because you're, you're also getting too much weight put on top of you. And that wears a person out. The idea of somebody, when they do shoot a double on you, is to stuff their head back underneath so that they have to wear, wear all that weight. Now, if, if he wants to take that double again, he just has to produce a little angle and get his head to the side. So we have three minutes. Do so you have, what, five minutes of blood time? And right now, what happens if you can't get it stopped in the five minutes? Well, then it's a six-point victory for Century. So this is big. I don't remember the last time I've seen one of those, but I have seen it a couple I mean, different you, times. Hedinger tournament about 10 years ago, I saw one. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while. You're we're, at 252. They, he is bleeding pretty bad right now, man. Well, what's interesting about it is the coaches, once it stopped. No, he can't go. He just said he, well, he's waiting. He, like, I don't know if he's got a cut or not. No, no, it's just what it is is they cut the time. That, that's that's a symbol for. And then they're waiting. for. They have to have this mat dry. So Randy Piazza is, is waiting just a little bit. One guy's cleaning up the blood. The other guy is trying to dry it a little bit, usually with a towel. Oh, so he's got his nose. Yes. Now it's bleeding again. It's well, not working. He's got to start. Now you got to start it. Yep, you got to start blood time again. And not starting it. Get it going. You, I mean, this is where you got a key to the start the blood time. Randy, Randy get it going. Randy's in. Yes, get it well, going. Oh, hey, you got a you got a BHS person running the clock and like, well, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Run the clock. What? Yeah, they, I don't, they don't know where to push the button. It, no, it's, it's still at 127. Well, they must be doing it behind the scenes or something, but. Right now, I mean, this is going to be close. This well, could be could, huge. You never know. You never know. And so they're trying to cut. The coaches are trying to get him to cut the blood time. Because once you get it stuffed and then it's just clean. But if you're not getting it to stop. Right now, the coaches are checking the clock. Because the two central coaches are excited about this. That they're not seeing it. Because it should be seen by the other coaches. The idea on this is the reason you have a clock that has that ability. See, you should be able to show it up on the clock. Well, they, they marked it down to one second. So, <laughs> so here we go. It's a reset, 0-0 zero, zero still in the second period, 127. This one is, well, I, I've seen it as crazy as a, a coach taking gauze and then taking tape and wrapping it right around the whole face. <laughs> no doubt, huh? <laughs> oh, shot. You know, one thing about Burkhart, though, there's a good high crotch opportunity. Good. Can he come around the corner and dump him down and score the first points? Two. Whoa. Oh, easy there, Chief. Oh, there goes my pop. Can you, can you grab? Oh, I'll get. So they, got, else. they did not give anybody a takedown nope. for that one. Yep, getting somebody. Maybe she can grab it. No, oh, she cannot. That's okay. I was getting excited because that would look like a. <laughs> <laughs> the color guy yes. getting into it. Yes, I kicked the table. <laughs> oh, Bismarck High now in a shot. Can trying he, to get his shot. He's got to get his leg back. Here we go. Trip. Good now he can sprawl. Can he get inside cradle here? Grab that ankle and lift. The coach is century. Coach is one. Get around. Get around. Get around. Get around. Get that inside cradle. Two. Got it. Two points. 37 Jer seconds. Two to zero. Jarris Burkhart. Good Burkhart job. takes the lead. This is a big match that Century, you know, they, they, they gulped a lot by not having their stud wrestler out there in this match. 
and knew, and knew they basically put themselves up against the wall by doing oh blood time starting it up but Jarris Burkhardt doing just a tremendous oh man he's bleeding big time oh yeah people coming over and right the coaches away are gonna go let, yep start the clock time because I tell you what with well, them not being able to see it they can stop it start it you can use what are called uh, you know conspiracy theories <laughs> it's, it's a demons <laughs> why they're not starting the clock but they they have it behind the scenes somewhere over there and the coaches are going to pay close attention I know the I don't know what you do at this point if you can't get it to stop part of it is as you're wrestling with such it's a physical guy in Burkhardt that I mean it, you, you could, can't could you can't pop, keep it in there could, could, keep, pop, could pop out again absolutely that's where you, you say know, what tape up the head this this sounds kind of crazy on sometimes but uh, the old trick that that old coaches used to use is they'd actually have a pocket full of cut tampons and they'd stuff them up there and they'd expand so that it wouldn't come out of the nose. Well, he's going to say stop. I, there yep. cannot be much more time left. Ooh, I would say maybe maybe 30 seconds a minute of blood time. Where he's got 20 seconds in the second and a whole third period. So two to zero. It's been a lot going on. Two to zero on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Jarris Burkhardt, the freshman, he's leads keep snapping James down. Nagel. Oh, he's got to keep him to the mat. Nagel's got a little angle here. It looks Burk to me like Burkhardt just using his strength. Oh, it's tossing him around, holding him short. Yep, and around to the other side. That's what he wants to do, use that Two muscle. Two seconds, rolled him out. Man, you can see how strong that freshman yeah, is. Yeah, just amazing. <laughs> it, that a couple times, James Nagel thought he was out. Little reset here. The Demons lead 7, 15 to 7. They were down 7 0, and then B Bismarck Highs won the last three matches. Well, like I said, every match is key here. This, this competition is, is can be tight. There's going to be a lot of matches. Like I said, the difference between some of these matches is just one seed. And it could be a 4-3 match in some of these. Could be 5-4. Somebody could step up, get upset with a pin. would be huge. Brody Furter started it with a win for the Patriots. Then Dakota got a win. Oh, and a tough in battle. The second match. That was a good match. 10-7 victory over Landon McMahon. So third period, 2-0. This one has just been a, a war. Well, James Nagel has had a lot of time in the Bismarck room. He's been behind a lot of people. He's got, you know, a, a, in a tough weight class. 170 is a tough weight class. Boy. Ran him out of bounds, kind of. Got a stalling call. Who got the stalling call? Uh, Burkhardt got warned for stalling. Okay. And that was because a lot of times when somebody starts pushing and, and Nagel had position a little bit, just kind of pushed him off the mat. Na Nagel in that situation was smart. Burkhardt should have circled. And he's got, again, getting a chance to score. Oh, called it out of off bounds. The mat. There's still two knees in. He shouldn't have called it that quick. So 111 left in this match, 2 0 right now. Burkhardt and both guys have holding been off and Nagel. Yep, both guys have been warned for stalling. You can see both guys are pretty tired here. One minute left. Jarris can get a takedown. He can secure this victory. Oh, he's trying to come around. He can snap him down, get an ankle. Grab the ankle, near ankle there, can score two. He had it, there it is, big. Now he's gotta get behind the arms. So 4-0 right now, Burkhard leads Nagel. Well, I tell you what, this gives him, there's about five or six wrestlers in the century room right now that are waiting in the wings to maybe go to a regions. A big victory like this could secure a freshman a spot in the region. So yep, Redenz, if Redenz would have wrestled, he would have been favored. He's number four wrestler. Correct. So in a grand scheme of things, this because Markai was looking at this potentially as maybe a 3-0 loss. Yes. Or or for sure, what's interesting is Redenz did pin him earlier this season. Right. But the, I think right now, Bismarck High coaches, they were meeting back there thinking that Redenz might be wrestling the next match out here. Yep. But, we, but we know over here that is not it. The Bismarck High's head on the mat, Randy Piat should have worn it for stalling. They're going to go that's, back to the middle. That, Randy Piazza is not trying to make, you know, it look like he's favoring anybody. But in a situation like this, you have to warn the guy for stalling because he wasn't doing anything. His head was on the mat. 4-0. This one is, looks like it's because, potentially end here. Yep. And Jairus Burkhardt, great victory for Century. So wow, that'll be. the freshman. On the BNC National Bank scoreboard, the freshman Jairus Burkhardt moves to 18 and 6 in the season. James Nagel drops 11 and 15. That's a three point team points. That'll make it 15 to 10. Bismarck High leads. It has been a battle back and forth. If you just join us on the girls' side, Bismarck High won 50. 57 23. Whoa, this is one of my star matches. Okay, here we go. Darian Bits. Darian Bits. Freshman. Jangula. Number, yep. He's number six in the state at 20 and 13. Tyrus Jangula 
He's a junior at A's 18 and 8, and he fell out of the rankings because he lost to a couple guys he would have never lost to last year. He's up a, probably a weight class too far. If you know, giving my opinion on that, that's Jane my was opinion a football only. player. He's a running but, back and linebacker, but he he is dangerous. Uh, he's very talented. He's got a great, basically, he wrestles like a little guy. So he's got a lot of moves. Now, Bits, he's explosive. He's strong also. And Bits is only a freshman. They're out of bounds. That was two knees out. So, and so Jangula last year, fourth at 160. Correct. And he weighed in today at about uh, 177. So it looks like with the amount of time left in the year, he's going to be a 182 pounder. I thought maybe he might go down to 70. So a two point takedown there. That's a serve pro takedown. And so this, this could be an interesting match. I started because Jangle is good enough to place. He could be a top three guy in the state, but he just got caught and pinned in several matches this year. Kind of goofy, sometimes does some things. He was a little injured at times and still wrestled. So, you know, he's got this sit back half. He has been dangerous since he was six with this half series he's got. He could, he's cranking bits straight over in that half. Wow, he's got that bits was... in trouble. Like I said, bits caught him and pinned him in an inside cradle earlier this year. But Jangula, he's just got to, Bits has got to find a way to get his head out of there. He's grabbing the hip. He, he looks like he did, yeah. Hoofta. But that, that's how dangerous he is. That half, he's got a, his forearms like he would be a, like a arm wrestler. Just strong. So we got three point near fall for that he's, one. He's, he's trying to take Bits over the top. Bits, don't, 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 don't roll through like that. It feels like it feels right, but it's not. <laughs> oh. Survive the roll through. Yes. 5-0 on the BNC National Bank Bits scoreboard. Bits needs to get up on his feet. He's, he's much better there or be on top. Right now he's taking the, the wrath of this half from Jangula. Jangula's throwing the leg in and got a half in again. He's got him in trouble because he's got it over the top. He's got it over now. He's got that one in tight. Darian's got to fight. He, this Patriots need Darian to wrestle here. This full match. He cannot give up six. Got 15 seconds. Bits can go. Still in the same move. Going to give him three, I would imagine. Here, three more. Yep. Bufta. So three-point near fall. So now we're at 8-0 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. But this is one of those freshmen that looks like he wasn't quite ready to get going. So he needs to step it up here. Coaches are coming right now. What are you doing? Not happy with what's going on right now. Uh oh Injury time? Or what's going on here? No. Went over. Bismarck picks top. So he dominated that first period on top. So he picks top again on Darian. Bits, Bits needs to find a way to get to his feet. 8-0 right the BNC National Mega Score where he's starting Jangle's, the second period. Jangle's just going to keep running this half. He does a sit-through series, catches his head the opposite side, and now Bits is in trouble again. This is what Century did not need to happen is get pinned here. Boy, he keeps working the same move over and over again. But he's good at it. I he's, guess if it works, why not, right? Yeah. Bits needs to fight that elbow down. Even a tech would not be as bad as a pin. So he gave he's him down, three more. Down by 11, and he's wearing his neck out. 11-0. Demons Lee overall 15 well, to 10. Bits is dangerous enough. He just got to has to get his one opportunity to get on his feet, lock something up on Bits, but Bits has got the confidence on top. You know, I I don't want to see necessarily Century get pinned as being the Century fan, but try to be non-biased. Bits is just not wrestling. And and Jango and, and Jango is good. Yeah, that's I mean, part I knew, of it. I knew is, that from day one. Yeah, as the expectation maybe as not realize these guys have wrestled before I'm guessing yes early in the season now bits rolled through thinking that's gonna feel good and Jangle has got him that's exactly tight. what you said that's not what you want to do right no not at all he's got his arm underneath he's got it the arm trapped the other one really good job yep. in the bridge there oh. that looks that looks like a pin so two three minutes and 16 seconds Yeah, so 21 to 10. That's a big win for the Demons right there. We'll move up to 195. This is this is the match we talked about early on. Ole Taylor, a sophomore, 28 and 5, number one ranked wrestler in the state, and Bridger Owens, a junior at 23 and 12. He's number three for the Demons. Well, Bridger's been going up and down between 82 and 195. The coaches have been trying to figure out exactly which weight they want him at because he actually weighed in today at 182, so he's given up some weight, and you can kind of see the difference. Oh yeah, you can two. totally see it. But, so this is where, of what course. Was, what did you say Ole, or uh, Bridger Owens weighed in at? 
182. Oh, that's, yeah, so he's significantly smaller than Ole. You see it from a physical standpoint, too. Ole Taylor, a really good defensive end for the Patriot football team as well. And Ole's goal is to be, he wanted to be a heavyweight by the time he's a senior, just to basically have scouts look at him to go big time football. But uh, I'm thinking 220 might suit him a little better yeah. than, than trying to bulk up that much. You know, sometimes you can't put that much on. But right now, well, Ole's, what is he, probably six foot, maybe? Yeah, maybe, maybe that. six one. He could maybe be six two. I think he's probably six one. But in, in the situation here, they're both kind of feeling each other out. You know, trying a couple moves up top. They're not trying to expose themselves. But like I said earlier, if I was Ole Taylor's coach right now, I'd be pushing the pace. Because I don't think Owens can stay with him in the, in the full gamut if he pushes it. He's got trying this over tie shuck. He's right now, he tried that little shuck, but he wasn't, couldn't quite do it. Ole ties with the head and he just goes over tie with it. This over tie, like people that watch wrestling, it's basically a mover. Now you shuck it past, you try to catch a leg or something going to the left. Bridger Owens, little sister Izzy, she got a pin at 109 of the first period, so she got the demon six points. Kendra There's Brother a quick drag. Oh, no. And no, this is an advantage for Owens when he doesn't score early, but Taylor, oh, little, nice little, shot. Dumping, yeah. dumping Owens. Owens got a bailer. He'll be on his back here. Straight, and he's, yep, he had, oh. Like got I said, he, and he oh, almost cradled him right away. He's got this leg caught, except the leg split. Boy, just at the last 10 seconds of that first period. So good job by Ole Taylor, taking an early lead at 2-0. Owens was smart there bailing out. He got his legs crossed, a little cross ankle. It was taking him right to his back. And if he didn't bail, he could have been in big trouble, even with a short amount of time. Could have got potential back points it's, at that point. It's that strength. You could just see how that strength, when he finally decided to take it, that dump was, was you know, you had 15, 20 seconds left. We still got to look for the Jabbers moving and storage move of the game. It's something to keep your eye on. We'll have that. We'll have our sports clips wrestler of the game after this one. But what advantage, Ole Taylor pummeling. Look at that. Oh, boy. Oh, nice. Picked him up and just dumped him down. A two-point takedown. Oh, that, that gives me goosebumps. That was so good. I'm serious. 4-0. That move right there, huh? <laughs> just for the fact that after you shuck somebody by and get some bit behind, he just lifted him like it was nothing. You know, it's, it's one of those where as you talk about gravity and all the other things. What are you going to stop Owens, there? I know somebody must be bleeding. But uh, Owens needed to get to that mat before <laughs> before gravity affected him. He was trying to get down because that was in trouble. There yeah, was some and, trouble. And that's one thing you can't you can't slam a wrestler down as nope. we're in a, a little break here with uh, blood time as the demons count in the blood time. Each guy gets five minutes as we mentioned that earlier. Stay tuned after this one. Folks are planning team financial advisors and shots crossroads post game show. Shots crossroads get filled up on their delicious menu that includes a famous number 99. Order online at shotscrossroads.com. Team buses are also welcome. Fans tonight's matches have been brought to you by Planet Pizza. We talked about them. It makes me keeps me making me getting hungry. Well, what's it, what's interesting is you know if if Century wouldn't have been able to have Redens and if he'd have bumped up to 182, I'm not sure he'd get you know halved like Darian Bits did. So that's it's one of those things they could think later. If Century can somehow find a way to get to the duels at State and have to face Bismarck High, it might be an option in the back of their head that they could do if 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 of course Redens is healthy by then. Yeah, it sure is the hope if you're a. But if you're you got, a Century fan, you think of scenarios and and matchups, things you want to see. Bottom wrist here, trying to run a little Turk series here, and a Turk Turk series is one where you basically split the leg, step through, and so he's just trying to get to, trying to drive him down, yep. trying to get Owens to a hip. A minute left in this second period as Taylor. Leads 4-0 over Bridger Owens, the junior. And see if he can now work. He's got a couple different pinning combinations I've seen him use. He's got a nice bottom wrist and a chicken wing series. He can stack people up, and he's trying to get a tilt. This is bottom wrist tilt. He's got back points coming. Two, he's three counting. count. Four and five. A five count on a little bottom wrist tilt. So i got to give him three before he goes out. He... I tell you what, I'm clapping because you don't <laughs> see the big boys do that. <laughs> We I can't know, clap. So, yeah, I can't <laughs> clap. I'm, I'm, I'm a color guy. I got to start being more non-biased. But, but I, I would, uh, we I get would it. clap. We've got, we've got color guys. I know Morelli and Minot. He, he, it's hard for him as he does the hockey games. So. Oh, stepping through on this turk, he can get bottom shoulder and get back points again. All he's doing is lift this. 7-0. Taylor has been dominant. Number but, one ranked guy in the state of North Dakota. Yep. Bridger but, owns number three. Yep. 
but but part of this is, you know, Owens has been three, but he's been giving up a lot of weight. You can definitely see the difference here. So all of these Bismarck coaches are gauging this by saying, guess what, is it better to be Owens down at 82 or, or not? Right. And team-wise, gosh, if Jangler would have got down to 70, they'd probably have Owens at 82. So we're through the second period. Taylor, good period there as he had a takedown on the three-point near fall. He leads 7-0 to zero now, as, and overall it's 21-10 to 10 in the BNC National Bank scoreboard. If you just joined us, I'm Chuck Claremont alongside John Gums with his PSP wrestling doubleheader. Well, I tell you what, the one thing about Owens, though, he is a little dangerous. You know, his dad was a national champ, All-American out of the University of Mary, and always has a dangerous little headlock. I, you can never count something like that out, so I would stay out of upper body throws. I would stay down at, at doing your cross ankles, your, your shucks, your drags, getting by. You know, he had that shot early of the dump. He is up by eight. One right. point escape there. So this is, yeah, that's eight points. So you're moving. You got four points right now. Yeah, but Century right now is saying pick up the pace. They, they want to get more points here. By picking up the pace, can maybe put Owens in danger. Now, Owens has been on the edge of the mat. Randy could warn him on, on situations like that. Taylor was nice, letting him back in. Minute 17 left in this match. Eight to zero, it's been all Ole Taylor. There's that shuck again, and Owens is trying to get to the mat. He's bailing down. <laughs> like yeah, I he said, didn't want to get slammed, he, I can tell you we, right there. They call that a skyjack in wrestling, and you don't want to be lifted. That's a bad, bad scenario, because you get your hips flipped in the air. So is Bridger Owens in this case, I mean, is this thought process that when he came into this, was Century hoping for a pin? Did they think this does? No, 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 no. In this situation, Century first wanted the win. Okay. But they know Ole's potential. And, and as this match went, they started to get this gap, you know, between a, number one and number three in the state. The, the coaches are saying, guess what? We need more points. Because they just wanted three, but they gave up six in the last one that they didn't expect probably to give up six. So they... So the Demons have won the last four matches. We're in the, se the seventh match of the night. Started out with a victory by Furter, then Dakota, and then it was BHS after that. Well, Kostelecki is one of the big matches. If this duel is within six points, that Kostelecki match is pretty big by him taking out Morris. So 21 seconds here. Taylor up by, by 10. You know, if he can go back to the bottom wrist, Owen's doing a good job keeping his base, or Randy Piazza would warn him. He knows there's short time, just 10, 12 seconds here. Still working hard in the bottom. Yep. Give Owen's credit. Yep, I agree. It's down 10 0. Looks like that's where it yes. could potentially end. Good match right there for the number one ranked guy in the state. Ole Taylor is he's victorious. 10 0. They'll get four points. That'll make it 21 14. The Demons lead in the BNC National Bank scoreboard. We'll move up to the 220 pound weight class as we have Evan Schmidt at 12 no, and 6. We'll see here. Nope, that's it's not Evan Schmidt coming out. That okay. over there checking in is Lichen Parlay, but it's actually Ginsrich. Who is this? Lichen Ginsrich, but it's Parlay. You have Parlay on there because that's what's in track. He had his name officially changed. So it's called Ginsrich. Ginsrich, yep. Spell it for me G E N R I C H. Ginsrich. Okay, so Lycan Ginsrich, yep. he'll, he'll move up and wrestle at 220. He's been a guy wrestling mostly at heavyweight. He's he had a, a senior. Big win against Turtle Mountain, their heavyweight, who's won some pretty big matches. So he, he's, a, he's a feisty kid. He, he works hard, doesn't get out of position. And then this is a junior, Aiden Schlafman for the Demons. He's 19 and 11, also plays football. Well, Schlafman is one of these kids that's dangerous. He, he's, he wins a lot of matches. Last year, he, he surprised people. He was an extra guy in the duels for Bismarck High, and they put him in in one of the duels, and he got a big victory against somebody he shouldn't have. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you, you look at him, I wouldn't say he looks like a wrestler necessarily, yeah. you know? I mean, that, that's not a negative piece, but wrestlers have the, the look to me is the... Uh, the Jarris Burkhart, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? When you're yeah, talking right. wrestlers and everybody, there's body types are different, but obviously Aiden Schlotman is, has, uh, he knows how to utilize his body and leverage and everything. Well, this is one of those matchups that's pretty even, surprising enough. They had a close match in Mandan, and Ginsrich, that's the very first turn of the year, Ginsrich actually won, but then on the bracket, just on matchups, uh, Schlafman won against two matches that Ginsrich didn't and ended up making, you know, the, the semis where Ginsrich didn't make that at all. It's kind of interesting. Matchups make a huge difference. So this here. sets up something because we had Lycan Ginsrich set up to potentially be heavyweight against Sam Larson. So what changes there? Well, the big thing is, is they have this Evan Schmidt 
who is probably going to be wrestling at heavyweight, it looks like now, as he's warming up back there. Okay. And, and he's a junior. He, he also gets some time. But he just, you know, they're trying to put a little more pressure on him, see if he can step up. Very quiet kid who who hopefully, you know, is up for the battle against a, a true about 275 to 285-pound kid. Sam Larson. So this one has just been kind of a chicken fighting and arm fighting, and but no, nothing after one period. It's 0-0 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Fans, stay tuned after this one for our post-game show, and we all, our jobbers moving in, or excuse me, our planning team, financial advisors, and Shots Crossroads post-game show, our sport clips wrestler of the game, and our jobbers moving in storage move of the game. Well, like I said, this is going to be, it could be a very close battle. It's one of those where somebody flips their hips the wrong way. Somebody could get pinned. And that's, that's what's dangerous about this one because they're both that evenly matched, but they're both susceptible to flipping a hip and getting pinned. I've watched it all year long with both these wrestlers. Ginsrich is on top. He's in the, and, and the he, blue and red for the Patriots. And Schlafman, he's, he's like, he's kind of a snaky bottom wrestler. He's trying to do this short sit series and catch. You know, Ginsrich off balance. Oh, wow, that's good. Good quickness for Aiden Schlafman right there to get out of that. He'll get a one-point escape. He'll take the early lead. But here's another thing you'll watch with Schlafman. He, he ties up right, and then he wrestles like a left-handed wrestler. He then ties up left, and it confuses some wrestlers. A little, little southpaw action, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like he wants to tie up right-handed, but then all of a sudden you'll watch. He'll tie up left-handed. So he'll tie up right, and then he switches to the left, and he really controls the left side. It's it's odd. I Ooh, think I think little, it's yep, a little shoulder there. Yeah, a little shoulder there trying for uh, <laughs> like in Ginsrich. Well, Ginsrich got a lot of time on the offensive line for the and really developed, you know, this balance. Yep. And I was I was impressed on what he did for the football well, team. Well, offensive linemen are athletes, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Yes. <laughs> and and honestly, wrestlers, I've I've known a lot of guys. There's a guy named a Hutmacher out of Chamberlain, South Dakota, probably one of the best wrestlers come out of there, is, is now playing football for Nebraska. And they put him on the defensive line. And I said, that's the biggest mistake. If he went to Iowa, he'd be an offensive lineman, and he'd probably be recruited really quick. Uh, NFL caliber. He's insane. So he definitely, oh, headbutt there. Yeah, these two, oh, somebody's getting yeah, both unhappy these, right here. Both these guys are basically, I know if, if, if one was a shoulder throw, the other one was a, oh. Ooh, nice quick single leg, but oh. good job by Schlappen getting away from that one. Six seconds left in the second period. It's just been the one-point escape by Schlappen that has him, the, gives him the lead. That's where we're at right now after one period, or after two periods, it's Schlappen with the lead, 1-0, and now, so Ginsrich will go down. Yep. And like in, you know, he's he's one of these wrestlers that he's come up with some very big big victories. He's a senior going against a junior here. He's got a nice stand up here. Clasping. He's clasping. Randy Piotz. That's know, what the what coaches are screaming. Yeah, he did clasp on there that. There we go. So we're all tied up with that one point escape. I don't know how he didn't see it. I, I saw it from over here. Because he was down on a knee, you can't even clasp hands. It's it's a stand up. And these big guys. I think he just gave him the benefit of the doubt and didn't think he had anything. We got 140. Who's going to get the first takedown? Who's going to get this oh, victory? Good shot, but he can snap him down. Oh, Genzi bails. Oh, hey, that's away. running away. <laughs> oh, then he gave him a little head slap right there. As it comes in. Well, that was kind of interesting. He was, he was fear for the guy grabbing his leg. He was, must have felt out of balance. Oh, still, these guys are trying to, <laughs> trying to slap. It's, but it's offensive line. Well, Schlappen's a defensive line. This is basically one mistake from winning a match. You know, it's a, it's a takedown yeah. either guy. 110 left in this match, and it has just been kind of a, oh, there he goes down. But can get, get it. He's running out of bounds. Didn't quite get him. Randy Piazza's thinking about it. He did run as he starts going out. So Schlappen, it's almost like... Ginsrich is waiting for Schlappen to make a move because he's right. not shooting. Ginsrich is waiting to beat, make that defensive move to get that takedown. Yep. And Ginsrich had one shot as all, kind of a pick tied to toward, leg, toward the end of the second. Oh, trying to oh. dump. Can he score? There's two. Big, he big. Got it. 45 six, seconds. But again, it's he, a, he tried to do Ginsrich it. Ginsrich is in a bad situation. He's high. Oh. It stays behind him. Oh, yes. Stays 37 there. seconds at the takedown. Is, right now, it's... And, Jeff Schumacher to one. standing by the edge of the mat going, you've got to be kidding me. He's trying to grab a head. Back to the middle. So what is Jeff Schumacher, what is he, what is he upset about? He, he, well, he didn't expect that type of performance. Somebody doesn't just bail if, after, you know, he, he didn't take a true shot. He's trying to do something sloppy by just catching him on something. So he's got to get a reversal here with 26 seconds left. He's trying to catch a little roll. Gensrich is not taking his arm deep. 20 seconds. Three and, to one right now. And is basically, right now, 
Randy this Piazza. would be an upset. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it could be. But Ginsers did beat him earlier in the season. Okay. But, but he is... Schlafman, there's no reason Schlafman should lose this match. Well, he's going to lose it yep. right now. Three to one. That's how we're going to end it. So big victory right here for Lincoln Ginsrich. As he goes on, he'll take a three to one victory and he'll get three team points. That makes it 21 to 17 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. The Demons are up. That stopped, what was two wins for the Patriots? Then it was one, two, three, four, win, five wins for the Demons. Now we got back-to-back -back victories with Ole Taylor and Lin Lincoln, or Lincoln Lincoln, Lindrich. Yep, Lincoln. Now we're, or, and now we got, is this part Evan Schmidt? Yes. So Evan Schmidt, 12 and six a junior against Sam Larson, a sophomore at 14 and 15. And somebody's got him fired up. Sam Larson doesn't get aggressive very often. But he's one of these kids who's big, has some muscle. He's gotten a lot stronger. I mentioned that earlier in a duel that I was, um, I was impressed on how much stronger he was this year compared to last. I know Larson was hurt a lot. He was a starting center in, early in the year. He got hurt in football, missed a lot of the year. Coach Mark Gibson, he doesn't want to talk about how the football season ended. Well, right right now, this is an overmatch because you have a, a boy that weighs about one, maybe 200 going against a two heavyweight. And, and he needs to fight. Now, Randy Piazza is going to watch this close because he will call a stalling early. And he, he probably stepped in there and says, you not need to stay in there. So this is one of those changes. Schmidt was potentially set up to wrestle against Schlopman, and they switched things he up. Tried to throw a headlock. But here's the danger. Now, as, as Sam Larson comes under with this underhook, you know, there's always a headlock as long as he stays opposite position. Now, Schumacher right by the snap, getting in the front head like a... I don't want to say Lycan, but you want to just keep saying Schmidt. Evan Schmidt has to realize that a headlock off of that underhook with the other guy's pressing is on the opposite side. A lot of pressure. Right now, Evan is outmatched weight-wise, but he needs to pummel in or he's going to be warned for stalling right here. This might be it. Oh, he's, Larson's got a chance. Ooh. Hoofta. And I tell you what, again, this is one of those battles that Century has to find a way because Larson is favored big time just weight wise. And we're getting down on the spots as you in. mentioned in the, the 100s that start after this. So we'll move, we started it, if you just joined us at 132. So we'll end it at 126. And, and Bismarck, you know, like I said, every one of these matches, it's been back and forth. We've got a lot of great matches coming up yet. Oh, man, and, and Coach Schumacher, he is out wrestling or out screaming right now, not happy. He wants something to happen, and he folds his arms and well, walks back in almost part, in disgust. Part of it is is that he knows Larson has worked really hard but hasn't scored anything. Like right here, and so he's trying to encourage his wrestler to keep working hard and get this. Usually it's Owens right now. Owens works with all the heavyweights. So up, we just got some score uh, up at Minot. Wilson's 20 to 19 right now. They Who's lead that? over Minot. So that one is a battle right there. Oh, Evan Schmidt has got to find a way to stand up where he was. There's a quick stand up. So 0-0. Zero, zero. Now he got a Schmidt with a, an escape. So he takes the early lead at 1-0. Well, Larson, if he just pushes, you're not going to get a lot of stalling if all he does is push, too. That's Larson's got to do something here for so, Bismarck High. Yeah. This could be a big, big It's one victory. of those things. If all he does is push... You know, that's, and, and that's a smart thing by Schmidt, by circling. You know, the, the big, big difference in a heavyweight match is the guys that actually do a little knee tap, grab a few legs. Just pushing a guy is not enough for some referees to get a stalling. So this, this underhook and push is not enough. Schmidt has got to circle in, circle, circle, and, and there we go. I mean, he's not doing anything. No, like I said, that, that underhook, he doesn't have head position. He's really not doing it. Schmidt is now... Pushing back, he's got to just keep pummeling in. Larson does not like to pick down. It's one of those things for the third period. There he actually grabbed the leg. Oh, see now in a situation like this, Randy Piazza is going, guess what? Plus one for, for Larson. He yep. actually touched the leg. Made a move. And, and there's a chance that he could get a warning stall really quick here if if Schmidt does not grab anything here. Bismarck, I'm watching their bench. They are not looking excited right now at this activity that's going on here. No advantage century if they can stay in this match if they lose it's not the the end all because they didn't expect to win this but but get, they can't get pinned oh there's that stalling call 
So now that's the stalling. That's, so that's now fine. next one's gonna be would be a point yep. potentially. And right now it's one to zero as Evan Schmidt leads Larson. It's a Schmidt's a junior. And that's Larson all, a sophomore. That's all Larson's done until he took that shot. That was smart on Larson's part. I knew he'd get a warning for stalling there against Evan Schmidt. So 25 seconds left in the second oh, period. We just haven't had a lot of action. Well, again, this is working. Oh, a duck. Got him. He's got him pulled in. Now they run oh, off the mat. Oh, yeah. Larson had I, him in a good spot that's right the one there. I would, I would have said the same thing as, as a century guy. Could have been. Some guys would have called right that for right. Know, running out. But they were on the edge of the mat. You know, right now, if you he doesn't wrestle with a lot of heavyweights. Century doesn't have these big boys. So there's techniques you have to use to, to not get in that underhook. One is you have to tie up with that shoulder on that side. So Larson looking a little tired. He, uh, oh yeah. I don't. I mean, where is Larson going to take? Is he going to take? I mean, I got to take down, doesn't oh, he? Oh, he. Ha you know, he's already got a stalling. He doesn't like going down. You know, if Schmidt can find a way to break him down and turn a hip, these big guys go over quick. But you know, he's got he's got his tripod stand up. Just a quick pop, chop, chop it forward. So what Schmidt needs to do? Oh, tried to grab a leg. Go. So it's one escape. So now we got one to one on the BNC National Bank scoreboard, all tied. Post on a shoulder. Don't let him underhook. See, the big guys. Big guys punch, punching this underhook over and over again. Larson was a state qualifier last year at 285. Yep. Which is crazy in the state of North Dakota. Every state placing heavyweight made it back. They're stalling on Century. So he got a point. Forcing him, forced him to do something. He wants to win the match. But right now, I know that Century does not want to get pinned. So Century, all they need to do is they, a takedown still gets a victory right now. Yes. So, oh, he, just like that. What's the next? Now, with that throw, is that all of a sudden Piazza is going, okay, now they're showing some activity. That's better. Better, but that's what Randy Piazza is starting to do, is to try to force some action because really the century wrestler has not he's done nothing. Not he has he's just basically played defense the whole the whole match. So, but he knew in the situation the coaches in the in the talk said, guess what? Every wrestler needs to go the full six minutes, not give up any extra points if at all possible. So I'll guarantee in the back of his mind is I can't get pinned, but he can get a duck there himself. He's tired. Both one snap and spin and he can win this. He Larson tried to throw, tried to Larson's give him a little just, toss. Yes, just jacking up, but he's Larson's tired too right now. Now he's, he's backing pushing up. him backwards. Yep, Schmidt just needs to snap him down to get a spin. So what? Okay, he's got all this leverage, this lean forward right now for for Schmidt. What does Larson do on that one to kind of counter that? He he needs to go back to his underhook like he was doing and pop this up, but just like that. But now Schmidt has got a chance to steal one here if he can get a snap down or something. But man, 30 seconds, or, under 30 seconds right now. No, he doesn't want to push in too hard. You can get thrown, all this stuff, heavyweights, the pressure lateral, lateral tosses. You know, but but this, this is a six point shift in the points if somehow Schmidt can find a way to get a takedown short amount of time. No. Boy, Boy, ten good seconds. job, good activity right there with 10 seconds. And right now the coach is on the sideline going, let's go, let's get after it. Oh, wow, right away. Almost got him. What are you going to do? Seven seconds. Hop out the side. Five Quick, seconds. Quick hop out one side. Oh, he was, it was called He's going to hold on now. He's holding on for dear life, and he gets the victory. What a good effort and try right there for Schmidt on the super quick move. But it's the escape and the one-point stalling call that gets the victory for Sam Larson. So through heavyweights, we're 24 to 17. Now we got a little change. We got some speed. We got some lightning on the ground right now. Grady Iverson, a freshman, 22 and 10, number three, and Cade Nuzma, another freshman, 25 and 11. These guys have seen each other a time or 20 yes. over the years. Well, I tell you what. Here's what's interesting. We need, as as Century fans, we need the Grady Iverson of the first half of the season, where where he beat he beat Nuzma twice. Now Nuzma caught him last time and beat him pretty good in the Rotary. So, stalemate. So Iverson needs to step out and, and wrestle a great match. This is back and forth. Like I said, Grady Iverson has won two of the battles here, and Nushma has won the last one, two to one. So this could be a close match, but new, there's that single. Ooh, this, good drag, that good is the, that right is the right Iverson I want to see right there. What a quick, quick toe drag right He's, there. They're going to go back to the middle, but they will give him a two-point takedown. That is an advantage for Iverson. He's long. Look at those arms. If he can get those snatch singles. To serve pro takedown. Nushma is, is snaky. He's very tough on top. He throws legs in. He can get back points. 
when you see the best of him is when he is doing his shooting. Iverson here has got an opportunity. You know, he's, he's got a few good turns. He's got an arm behind the back. Can he get a tilt points here? He's got kind of, an, kind of a tough situation here. Like he it. can knee block. Can we tell Randy to move to the other side so I can <laughs> see? <laughs> Did you just tap him on the shoulder? Yeah. It's like, excuse me. There you go. Thank you, Randy. Yeah. I think referees purposely get in the way when the pin is not sure. You know, it's supposed to be eminent, but he he, he will get out of the way so you can't see if there's a pin. So he's tied up that leg. It's so like cons conspiracy theories with referees. Oh, he's got this. Oh, there we go. Let's see. He's got the, the arm up. Yeah, it's called a guillotine. So they're going to go back to the middle. And Two to zero. First takedown. Serve pro takedown there by Grady Iverson, number three in their state. Well, Newsman number four. Kind of a goofy little thing that happened at the beginning of Christmas. They were having a practice, and he got caught with, I think they might have been playing dodgeball, and someone was throwing, and it broke Iverson's nose. Whoa. And so he stepped over. Great little well, reversal. Move right right there. Think of that move right there on the like they jobbers said, moving in storage move of the game. Snaky, like you said, stepped right over. Two to two. 24 seconds left in the first period. And, and so he had to wear a mask. And it kind of kind of changed the trajectory of how the season was going for him. And he's he's just kind of gone without the mask the last you know week, week and a half here. So he's just kind of it's different. You're wearing a mask, you're able to see where you can wrestle and you breathe differently. Yeah. So I'm hoping that helps. Because I the Darth the Darth Vader look wasn't doing well for him. It wasn't working for him, huh? <laughs> two to two after the first period. One takedown by Iverson. And then Newsman got the reversal in that first period. So Newsman de defers, and Grady Iverson will take down. So newsman has got a sit-back half series that right away Grady Iverson cannot, cannot wait. He's got to keep wrestling like, like he is right now, scramble situations, putting one move in against another. Still no call. As they still say, they Newsman has control with that single leg. Can warn, can warn Newsman for stalling if he doesn't move up or try to... Yep, can, Oh, that wasn't the warning. That was the stalemate. Randy didn't like that position, but that was not a good call. I tell you, Grady Iverson looks like he is hell bent for election oh, right it's now. It's caution. Coach Boy and Jim came running out right away and said, "Hey, that's that's a move too quick." Yeah. And so the, you know, this is so tight that this is one of those that could be a point difference, but. Iverson started out so good, he cannot get stuck on bottom for a long time. This is a spot where, you know, oh, we're too Noose. high right there. But, but New, no, Noose He's got his legs wrapped in. He's flat now, he, out he's now. He's calling a stalemate on this right away. He's trying to pull that arm out. He's working on that, but he can't get it. Trying to oh, get figure tilt four, now. figure four. Oh, there's a figure four. Greg Iverson's got a chance to catch ahead here. He did fall into a figure four there. There's the fig. He went to a figure four. Greg Anderson catch him right to his back. Can he get back? There's a the reversal. He's got to keep the leg. Reversal. But there was, there was a couple situations there where, you know, the coaches wanted an extra call because there's illegal moves. There's false starts. And Randy's just kind of letting him wrestle, which is which is fine. Four to two right now after that reversal for Grady Iverson. He leads Cade Newsom the freshman. We knew this was going to be a battle. We kind of circled this one knowing that this was going to be one of the key matches of the game. Like I said, about five, six of these matches tight. I knew it was going to be tight at heavyweight. I knew, but, you know, I, I actually didn't think it was going to be tight at heavyweight because I knew Century didn't have their guy there. But, oh. Yeah, Burkhardt is one of those guys for the Patriots has been kind of hurt a lot of the year. The Jacob Burkhardt. Yep, and, and it's 50-50 right now if he'll even get to wrestle at Regions next week. Okay. He had his knee scoped. You know, he did wrestle early in the season. He has been wrestling in the room some. Okay. And, you know, you just can't hop in there without wrestling for quite a while. So no. there's that step over. Step, step over step trying over. to get a reverse. Oh, nice job short, by short time. Iverson step. holding on. Yep. He's got, he he gets, looked up and saw the yep. clock. Well, I tell you what, this little move he did, I got to check what that is. He does kind of a little short sit. The guy follows, and then he steps over the other top. And... So oh four to two right I, now. Iverson leads. I actually expected this to be a little bit higher scoring match. Switch right there and quickly down to the ankle and the. But the Iverson, waist. Iverson has to get back to his pinning combination. He's got a good chicken wing series. He's got a good bottom wrist. Nushma doing a good job blocking. Look at his look at he's kind of blocking that so he can't step over the leg. Because some wrestlers, you'd be surprised, they can wrestle with their feet too while while they're wrestling. Yeah. They move things. They block. 
that kind of happened. Oh, good job. Oh, yep. Hand control. Arching out and still got a hold of the hands. Getting one point. So four to three by Cade Newsma. Oh. Oh. oh, yes. Kind of headbutt each other. Yeah. <laughs> they well, each other. Well, Iverson needs to get that quick shot again, get that takedown. He is up by one still. This one kind of gets high sometimes. Yeah. Right there like that one. Yep. Sucker drag out of it, and you can score. You can go right to that front head into a into a cradle. If you can catch it, he's really long. Moose was going to try to do a sucker drag. He did it. Well, a good quick move around. They're going to give him two-point takedown, but that news, yeah, but Iverson's got a hold. He could get it. Oh, got him in a cradle right away. And now they got a, lots of action. Gave him two back points and then a two-point reversal. Oh, he's down by one yet. So seven to four, seven, seven to six, six, excuse me, with 45 seconds in this match. Do you let him up at some point? Going to call a, yep, they're going to call a one-point escape so eight to six newsma got the double leg can he pull it in or can New can uh, iverson spin around <laughs> 19 seconds nope oh he's still on top one. come back on top iverson can tie this up two take down 10 seconds high take down two points Ten. keep him right there eight seconds left it's got him tilted. No, no tilt right there, so four seconds left. What a good job right there by Grady Iverson getting a two-point takedown. Like I said. Guys got to sit down, please. Thank you. Okay, short time. Can he ride him out here? Catches an ankle. So we're going to go got, into over overtime. overtime action. So eight to eight, what a battle. It was 42 after two periods. Iverson, then what activity? You said this is the activity that was going to happen. Yes. We had just a flurry of activity. So first takedown. Well, yep. First takedown in this first minute is it. Both eight these guys. Eight. One thing Nushma does, he plays that low. It stays very low. The sucker drag, you got it last time. Nope, nothing, nothing. Steps out of it. Tries to dump him and throw. That sucker drag, he gets too deep on that front head, and that elbow gets sucked across. Wrestling fans definitely know what that is. Yeah, he's trying to, like you said, pull him down. And yep, and it's, it's a drag. It's, it's called a sucker drag, and he's actually backing out. So Randy could actually warn him for stalling as Iverson's 35 seconds here. Usually so Usually doesn't happen in overtime. Pull him down again. Here he's in that same thing again. But Iverson's, yep, he's got that... He's deep sucker drag coming. Got to watch out for the sucker drag. Got to bump him hard. Nope, nope, don't give Trying it up. Trying to grab that leg. We still got him up. Nope. Pull him down there. You got it. There, it's two points. That's it. What a what a win. Does a beat Demons fan go crazy? What a great battle there. Overtime, a two-point takedown makes it 10 to 8 in that match. BNC Bank scoreboard moves it up to 20. 7 to 17 as we will move into three matches left 113 120 and 126 so out here for the patriots okay this is Seamus Ku Kluck he's yep. an eighth grader 16 and 8 and Hudson Edberg and Hudson Egberg for the demons a freshman 24 and 9 it's not Egberg it's Egberg we check yep. that out so yep. even though it's spelled E G E Hoofta. <laughs> I tell you, it's just been exciting this entire match. What's he just joined has been back and forth. What's interesting is, you know, this this duel, every match here on out is going to be close. That's just how it is. There's a good shot by Ku Kluck. Try to suck that in, that, that double leg takedown. He's pulling it up. And Edberg is another one of those snaky wrestlers trying to throw legs in. Tr trying to catch something and no, Ku Klux is still inside. That's not who they're giving a two point takedown to. I. I'm who? who yeah. Edberg got oh, it. Oh, Egbert got it, okay. Yep, Egbert got it. <laughs> trying to throw a deep half in. He's got those legs working it hard. Yeah, you can to see pull. he's confident on top. Egberg, a freshman, 24 9. And these two, I think this is the first time these two have wrestled. Egberg was fourth last year at 106. He lost to Enzinger in the semis. And so Ku Kluck has beat some guys that have, 
have beat Edberg. So this is actually the first time that they faced each other. The first half of the season, uh, Sheamus was wrestling junior high wrestle matches, but he, he did get varsity matches last year. Well, eighth grade can't come up right away, can they? Correct. Have to wait till after Christmas or something? Yep, as long as you have somebody else in the room that's older that can wrestle that position. Yeah. So girls is different. Correct. So lots of activity here, but nothing. So good job of riding by Hudson Egberg. Stalemate there, short time, nine seconds. And again, Seamus Ku Klux was in at a great high crotch shot, but Egberg found a way to get behind and, and snake his legs in. <laughs> Lots of kids loving wrestling in North Dakota. Probably little kids, future wrestlers of high school wrestlers in North Dakota. Oh, yeah. Lots of little Matt Packers, I got a feeling, around here, huh? So that's 2-0 on the BNC Bank scoreboard. After that two-point takedown, the serve pro takedown. What's going to happen here? Coach Human is coming and talking. He's, he's to asking on some, on some position on this half. It okay. looked like he would reach up, and, and he's grabbing part of you know the, the head on top, but then his other arm touches the head, so he's asking if it may go into a full Nelson. Because when he goes up there, he, he had two hands that were taken, and he touched his tie to the head. That's all it takes. So I think he's asking if that turned into a full Nelson with that half. Nate was my leadoff hitter back in uh, Pee Wee baseball. <laughs> <laughs> So now he's talking to his. Yep. It's like get, it get almost, it's almost like every guy has a separate coach. Well, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's almost, I watch yep. all these different guys coming out, these assistant coaches. There's a lot of them. Demons leading the overall duel 27 17 as they've won the last two matches. Well, this Larson is, and this is the Newsman. This is the pivotal match for what's left. If Bismarck High wins this, the duel is over. So this well, one is a must win this is a for must, Ku Klux. Must win. But he's number four, so would he be favored? Where do you have in yours, Hudson well, Egberg? These two have not faced. The only reason why Sheamus is ranked higher than him he's is because he's, be, he's beat people that Edberg got caught and pinned by. Okay. Edberg's tough. He's returning state placer, state you know fourth last year. Sheamus is dangerous. But right now it looks like... He gave him three. Right. It looks like he's having trouble getting out of the legs that Edberg is putting on him. 5-0 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. I did not see exactly who picked the position. If, if Sheamus picked down, that was a mistake. He needed to go back to his feet and try to get a takedown versus getting punished on bottom. That's hard so many times, you know, getting thinking you can get that escape. But maybe you really got to know your wrestler, right? Who That's you're wrestling right. against. That's right. Caden Nakota, you don't take down. Yeah. <laughs> And here's another one. Another one you don't pick down. Uh, he's really competent riding, whether it's high, no matter what. He uses his legs very good. He's got him in that half Nelson, but Ku Klux. It's his sit, yep. And he's sitting doing the sit back half series. Okay, three more points. I missed that one. I didn't see it. Yep. Basically, it tilted him over with his, throwing the legs okay. in, put a kind power half on the far on the side. Other side. He's getting more here. There's lots of good moves by. Egberg, the freshman, who now he's got him in the pinning combination. That's not a good spot if you're Ku Klux. That's it. Yep. Second period, three minutes and 48 seconds. And Ben DeForest. When things get tough, well, they're bringing out Dane Nelson because the duel is over. So while well, this one they have Okay, so Dane Nelson is 29 and five, and J, lots of JV experience mostly. Right. But then for the Demons, bringing out the number one ranked wrestler in Ben DeForest at 19 and two, just a sophomore. Last year, DeForest state champion at 113. Boy, right away got a two point takedown, a serve pro takedown, got back points. Give him three more, so DeForest early lead up five. And this is a, a big task for a freshman to come out and wrestle the best guy in the state at the weight. Dane Nelson has had Boy. a great season. Yeah, I got him in a but cradle he's right got here. Him pretty he's tight. Got tight. This Man, is how is tough DeForest is. Super tight. DeForest is. I'm hoping his knee stays good throughout the season. The rest. There he goes. He, he could be on top of the podium. Spin, that's 40 seconds. Six more points for the Demons. That makes it 39 to 17. So you talked about some of those pivotal matches. 
One was that 106. The Demons got a victory there. Another one was 285 potentially. Yep. Well, this is Ethan Koontz coming out. Ethan Koontz, a junior against Carson Lardy. The sophomore, 15 and 10, and coach's yep. son. And Koontz, Koontz has beat him earlier in the year. Lardy, he was one of the last wrestler against Williston. He got beat the last match against the, in that Williston match, the Demons lost 31-30. I mean, not his fault, just right. to go up and be, he's the last wrestler and uh, the last, victory. Got. Last wrestler tonight too. Yep. <laughs> and actually, Lardy's wrestled well lately. Ooh, oh, nice move by right Koontz. there. Like Ethan Coons, 18 and 11, the junior. He's got him in a pinning combination too. And all that. Did he give him? Yeah, he gave him two back points. Yes, two. So a two point serve pro takedown, as well as two back points. Two point near fall. 4 0 right now. Ethan Coons leads. Yep, Coons last year did take seventh in state. And he's, he's dangerous at times. He's one of these wrestlers that's. You know, always seems to find a way to get his, get on top. He's kind of like a cat. So those those matches that are, are close, you'll find Koontz a lot of times in the right spot and on top. So Lardy grabbing a hold of that leg, trying to see if he can work his way around. Afterwards, fans, stay tuned for the post-game show. The oh, the, oh man, defensive pin, defensive pin by Carson Lardy. That was 115 of the first period. So the Demons dominated at the end. They will be victorious 45 to 17 for the Demons. This was chaos last time trying to get a interview. <laughs> the only way we're gonna do this is to bring somebody back here if, and track down who we wanna to talk to for the Demons. I don't know if we go and see who did we get a chance to talk to last time. Well, I tell you what, as this duel, when I when I look at the accumulation can, of things, there are so many. We're gonna have to so go out and many, grab somebody. Yeah, I, I can do that in one second. Okay. But just just my quick summary, a little bit of, you know, this duel. Every match was close. Now the score doesn't show it, but the competition was great tonight. You know, and I I like the crosstown rivalries, something that will never end. You know, Century Bismarck High, and uh, it brought the people out. And so it's a good thing for wrestling. And so hopefully we can get somebody to talk to and talk a little more wrestling off the Bismarck team. Yeah, we're going to go try to track somebody down. We'll kind of get us in the post-game show, see if you, which guy you want to grab and a coach too. Yep, we I will get do a that. coach. That'd be awesome. As appreciate John running down and grabbing somebody here as we're in the planning team, financial advisors, and Shots Crossroads post-game show. Whether you're looking for a full-service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, planning team financial advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. Visit us online at planningteam.com. As John works down, trying to talk to somebody else, just a solid wrestle, uh, a match by the Demons, and a lot of close matches early on as the Patriots took the early lead. As I'll give you a little recap here, they won the first two matches with Furter beating Logan Mertens. He won 14 to two, and then Caden Dakota was down early, came back, won 10 to seven. That made it 7-0 for the Patriots. Morris then wrestled Kostelecki in a big win right there by Dylan Kostelecki, a 6-4 match. That was one of those kind of turning points, if you want to call it that, for the Demons that they got that victory. And then you moved up to the 152. Tate Olson was a pinned Riley Stair. Out of Rougeau's pinned at Jack's Gums, and then Burkhardt had a good victory of 4-0 over James Nagel. It was 15 to 10 at that point. It was still close. Perfect. Coach Lardy, come on back here. We'll switch here to a little talent view, and we'll talk to Coach Lardy first. Step on in here, Coach. Congratulations. Throw some headphones on. So you're a not only are you a happy father, you're a happy coach as well. Or happy coach, you're a happy father as well. Good job by Carson on that to end it out in style. Yeah, it was, uh, well, as a dad, it's <laughs> hard to coach sometimes. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely a, a nice win for us. Well, there. yeah, as, uh, speaking of dads, obviously, uh, John Gums was hard for him to watch the you know, entire thing, but yep. especially but uh, with his dumbness. Let's just talk about this match tonight. Uh, it, it was close early on. I mean, it was back and forth. You guys had a 15 to 10 lead. Talk about some of the key matches tonight where they could have went either way um, tonight as, uh, I mean, just a just a demon victory, but it, 
the expectation, I think, for the Patriots was this could have been a lot closer. Yeah, and, it, and for us, when we penciled it out, it was a lot closer than this. We, we were quite honestly worried about the duel. Uh, I think it started out, we talked uh, before the duel, we talked about capitalizing on bonus points when we had the opportunity, but then also uh, eliminating the bonus points that they could get. And uh, I think it started out well for us with the first match. We, we were, uh, quite honestly, uh, we would have been happy with <laughs> anything but a pin, and that's, that's kind of what we got. So uh, that kind of started the ball out rolling for us. And then uh, I tell you what, 138, uh, yeah. when Landon McMahon came out there and he was uh, was up big on uh, Dakota, yeah, Dakota to start with. That was uh, that was huge for us. You know, we didn't come up with a win there, but I can tell you that was definitely a momentum uh, you know, swing for us still because uh, that was a match that, you know, Dakota is definitely the, the favorite there. And uh, it was just nice to see Landon come out. Uh, we've had two great weeks of solid practice with, with guys, and he was one that we knew that was going to come out ready to, ready to roll, and that was uh, definitely what he did tonight. Didn't come out on the winning end, but definitely proved that we're we're right in the battle there. Yeah, and then that I looked at 182 too with Jangula, you know, coming in 18 and 8 bits uh, as a freshman, but ranked number six. And boy, it was just a really good effort by Jangula tonight. Yeah, Jangula is uh, he, he's a fourth place finisher last year. Uh, bits did beat him early in the season, pin this early in the season at a at Mandan. Uh, and so that was kind of more of a redemption uh, match than anything for Tyrus. Tyrus, I think, had something to prove to himself tonight, and he uh, went out there and he got it done. Yeah, and then uh, I think where Century was looking at some things, that key match at 106 with Iverson and Newsma. I mean, it was a battle back and forth, but boy, uh, what a great takedown in overtime by Newsma to get that victory. That, that, that match has gone back and forth all year. I think we're... Uh, I think two and one now with him, uh, but they've Iverson has beat us before as well. So uh, I tell you what, Newsma is separate. Uh, you can never count that guy out. He's uh, come from behind in multiple matches this year, like seconds to go, and he uh, he's tossing kids to their back to get the win. So he's definitely a gutty kid. So nothing uh, out of his playbook, but uh, certain, certainly something that we. We'd like to solidify the win earlier, but uh, we'll take a win any yeah, way so, we can get it. Thanks, Coach. And last thing I want to ask you, too, is so this sets you up for the state tournament. I know there's there's West Region still, but as you look at this, your team injuries, everything else, are you are you getting rounded and, and prepared here for the tournaments at the end of the season? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, like I was saying, the last three weeks of practice, I would say we're definitely moving in the right direction. We got uh, kids back in our lineup that uh, had been out for a while. And uh, I, I just feel like we're we're moving in the right direction. We got uh, some goals for each yet, but we're we're definitely uh, moving in the right direction. Well, it's a big victory. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. As the Demons are, are victorious, 45 to 17. Yes, Good luck you. the rest of the way. And yes. we really enjoyed uh, the coverage we had. I got a chance to yeah. do for you this year. We we certainly appreciate you guys coming out and uh, covering them like this. Uh, it's just really nice since the pandemic where there's been so many things that have sprouted up. So we certainly appreciate your guys' coverage of our, our team. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good yes. luck the rest of the way. Thank you. As uh, That was Coach Mark Lardy for the Bismarck Demons. As the Demons are victorious, 45-17. to 17. And Before we, uh, we got our, our, come step on in here. Put your headphones on. Is this, is this on? Uh, let's see. You are on. Go ahead, John. Okay, Tate, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Hey, congratulations on a big victory tonight. You know, you're one of the seniors on the team. So Tate Olson. Yep. You expected for some leadership. You know, you've had a good season, only one loss. You know, what are you looking forward for the rest of the season here? Uh, we just got to keep putting in the work and grinding out the season until we get that state championship. Yep. And your thoughts coming into this, too, is, you know, one versus two, inner city rivalry, so many things uh, to look for in this match. Were you guys, how pumped were you coming into this match today? Oh, we, our coaches tried to fire up the most they could, telling us that it's crosstown rivalry. We haven't lost to them since 2017, and we don't want to be the first team, too. So, so that, that fired you up yeah. at that. Was there any specific match, too, with you as you take a look at it? Your coach mentioned that uh, the, the match that Landon McMahon had against Caden Dakota, even though he lost, he said that fired you guys up a little bit even. Oh, yeah. Him just scoring on him, making points, getting – it was great, yeah. And then, yeah, it was wonderful. That really fired us up. And for you coming out here right now, you're ranked number two 
in the state of North Dakota. Uh, and for you, your sights are obviously set on a state championship. What's going to take for you to get that state championship? Um, I think I just got to keep my head going one match at a time and then worry about that championship when it comes, not worry about it at all until it's that time. There's lots to go before you yeah. get to that. There's a big journey before that. A big journey before that. I yeah. love it. And for Bismarck High, for you guys, uh, duels, um, it, you know, you want to continue that tradition. And how much does that mean to you internally, that Bismarck High tradition? Oh, it, it means a lot to be a demon. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's the best feeling ever to be known as a demon. You know, we work the hardest. We put in the time. And we're going to come out and compete when it's time. You know, and you watch these kids. What was so interesting to me is we saw all these kids sitting down in front of us, just cheering, just jumping up and down as things happen. That has to be something for you that, you know, looked up to from these young kids um, in the middle of the ring here. These guys are just, they want to be somebody like you. Yeah, I remember when I was the little kid back in the day, sitting and watching all the other big guys being, I wish I can be like them one day, and now I'm here. Pretty amazing. Congratulations. Great job tonight. Great victory for you Thank personally. You. And great victory for the Demons. We appreciate the time. That's Tate Olson. He's a senior, and what a, what a match he had tonight as he was dominant. And Riley Stair will take our first break of the postgame as the Demons are victorious tonight, 45-17. to You're listening to High School Wrestling on the PSP Network. Whether you're looking for a full-service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full-service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag-teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throw in some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99. Here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. It's time for the Shots Crossroads and Planning Team Financial Advisors postgame show. Now for a look at game stats and analysis. Let's go to the postgame show. All right, welcome back as the Bismarck High wins 45 to 17. We're at Carl Gar Gymnasium. Things are just kind of getting wrapped down, wrapped up here as I'm Chuck Claremont and John Gums and uh, a lot more exciting match. I know it was 45-17, but um, ultimately it was a battle all the way throughout here on the boys' side. And um, exciting match tonight, even though uh, Century didn't do what they wanted to do, but I think it put them in a position knowing going forward that I think they feel like a couple key matches, they got an opportunity against the Demons later on. Well, I tell you what, as, as this goes, it's, in, it's an individual sport, but yet these team things are huge for fans, for the overall and the demons find a way because it's a it's a family it's a tradition century has it too this crosstown rivalry but uh man it is tough to beat these demons and so the other part of this as we take a look at this too as uh we're in the shots crossroads planning team financial post game show the demons moved to eight and one they've already clinched um getting in um century moves to four and three do they still have an opportunity to get in the state dual competition. Yep, their only scenario is to run the table now. They need to beat Dickinson, they need to beat Williston, which is gonna be insane. That duel will be really, really tough come Saturday. And then of course they have to also. And I guess the question too, was we don't know what the final score was up in Minot. Um, Minot needs to lose to Williston, obviously. Well, not no more. Not necessarily, okay. Yeah. Well, yes, yes, for sure. Yes, because otherwise if, they if would Mi finish. If Minot beats Williston, then we, if we beat Williston, Williston would have only two losses. And so, yes, that, that would be a bad, bad scenario for, for Century. 
Yeah, no doubt. So we're in the Shots Crossroads Planning Team Financials postgame show where Planning Team Financial Advisors helping clients work toward financial freedom. And Shots Crossroads, your postgame headquarters, order online at shotscrossroads.com. A couple things we got to do here, John, before we uh, yes. shut her down. We first of all have to do have the Jobbers Moving and Storage Move of the Game. Uh, tonight's Move of the Game is sponsored by Jobbers Moving and Storage. They focus on the details of the process without ever losing sight of the big picture. Their efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management keeps everyone on the same page. Locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. Tonight's Jobbers Moving and Storage Move of the Game is from Ole Taylor. You know, the time when somebody gets excited as a commentator and claps. And you get goosebumps. Oh, and I said I got goosebumps. Exactly. It was, it was one of those where... <laughs> You know, you see a move that doesn't happen very often, but it's a power move. We call it a skyjack. And when, when PSP gets a little bit farther, they'll cut these little clips. And we will. And they'll add We're already in. doing it. Okay, well, that's the next step. You find that. <laughs> but it was so close to a skyjack. He just started it, but you watched uh, Owens bail to the ground. And if he could have lifted that and, and scored it, it's one of those moves that you just don't see in wrestling. It was awesome. Well, Ole Taylor, he is victorious today. He won a 10-0 over Bridger Owens, and that was the Skyjack in the second period, I think, a takedown, a serve pro takedown. He's our jobbers moving stories. That's our move of the game. Last thing we do here is the, the Sport Clips Wrestler of the Game. Sports Clips brings you the MVP of this matchup. Sports Clips is the home to the MVP haircut experience. Nothing comes close to making you feel like an MVP, quite like the MVP experience at Sports Clips. Tonight's Sports Clips MVP is Tate Olson. Yeah. Giving it to the senior who's overlooked a lot by a lot of studs over the last few years works his butt off has one loss on the season so it wasn't necessarily the complete victory of tonight because he dominated in his match there but it was his victory of of being a team leader yeah and you can tell that right there as just very well spoken young man as he talked about being a demon and, and being a role model and everything else and he was that guy early on the little kid that was uh, you know yearning to be where he is today in the middle of the ring so tate olson he moves to 25 and one he had a pin at the 310 uh, three minutes and ten seconds into that match over Riley Stair. That moved the Demons. Actually, they were trailed going into that. It was seven to three, so it moved the Demons ahead, and then they never looked back as they are victorious today, 45 to 17. Earlier on, the girls match as the Demons. Uh, girls won, let's see, that was 57 to 23. And we're still trying to effort a score which we don't have with a Minot Wilson. Minot was trailing 20 to 19 in that one as uh, one couple things we do have to thank all of our sponsors tonight as we get into it as our sponsors the bnc bank scoreboard the pregame sponsor shields the timeout sponsor of hub international insurance the serve pro takedown tonight's game was also brought to you by all these these great sponsors planet pizza rogers move moving and storage ups Jersey Mike's, Presswich Orthodontics, Northern Plains Heating and Air, and our intermission sponsor was Presswich Chiropractic. The match was 33-19. Uh, to 19. Okay, Wilson defeats Minot 33-19. to 19. Last thing, folks, take a look at this, our PSP schedule. The rest of the way through here tomorrow night, join us as we got... Oh, uh, that's not it. That's the old one. Hello. Let me go back to the live game because I know this week we got here the live game. This is what we got tomorrow night because we have Bismarck High girls and boys basketball right here in the Carl Gard Gymnasium. The Demons will take on the Midgets and the Midgets uh, of the Dickinson. And then Saturday will be boys basketball with the Patriots taking on a Turtle Mountain. I actually, that's not, that's not, it's actually a, it's a Class B matchup, and you know what? I don't even know what those are, to be honest with you, but it's it's uh, Class B basketball, because I know Todd, I think one is 48, or no, uh, Standing Rock is one of them, and I can't think of who okay. they wrestle, Washburn maybe. Uh, that's Todd Domries and Cole Higlin have that one. Um, great job tonight. Appreciate it, John. It was always fun to do them uh, with you. I'm Chuck Claremont signing off with you folks. Final score, 45-17 the boys, 57-23 the girls. Have a good night, folks, and we'll hopefully you tune back in tomorrow. You're listening to PSP. Have a great evening. Whether you're looking for a full-service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full-service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial.
Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, points, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and